Hello, everyone. Ah. Welcome to the Leo and Danny Show. That's right, guys. Please uh, support the channel by giving it a, this, this video a like. You can't like the channel. You can just give the video a like. Mm. And also, the Patreon. We put out an extra episode every week. It's going to be linked in the description if you want to check that out. Yes. Also, Leo, last shameless plug. Mm -hmm. The NFT fucking shirts came in. Dino, Holy zoom shit. in on this. Can you zoom with that camera? Mm, that's Stalin and Vladimir Lenin fucking uh, alien is fucking fifteen thousand dollars or twenty two ETH, motherfucker. Danny Mullen NFTs. Yeah. These came out real sick. He's gonna be nice. He's gonna be linked down there too. That's nice. What do you think? Uh, that you, what's the worst thing that could happen to somebody wearing, wearing that shirt, like in a high school institution or maybe a college institution? It's an interesting question. I would love to compile a list of bad things that have happened to people for wearing Danny Mullen merch. <laughs> There's got to be a lot of bad things that happened. Somebody had uh, somebody definitely got it confiscated and then had to wear something else for sure yeah. the entire day. Yeah, yeah. Danny Mullen freed the slaves at high schools. That's happened a lot. The no fat chick shirts, I think, are going to cause some problems. Mm. I put out a no fat chick merch line because nobody likes fat chicks. Let's face it. And um, that, it, it's, I don't even know. You think somebody is going to get their food spat in? Yeah. I pissed mean, it, in? They're going to go to the cafeteria lady at their local high school, and she's, I mean, more than likely overweight, let's be honest. Yeah. And she's going to see that, and she's going to, there he is, oh, there he is. Oh, Phil Dawes, we're talking about fat girls. Come sit down. We're talking about fat chicks, buddy. Uh, yeah, the, I think that at some point so there will be a ret retribution. I mean, the, the, the fat chicks seem very vengeful, as we yeah. saw. They want to get back at us. You think they're meeting in secret, planning their yes. next move right now? Yes, there's one fat chick that leads all of them. Yeah. I don't know who that would be. Yeah. You, it's probably Melissa McCarthy, I would say. You know the that, actress. So you think Melissa McCarthy's coming after us? And I just yes. imagine them, you know that thing they use to clear chips on the the, 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 the craps table? Yeah. I imagine they have one of those, and they're like moving around their little military <laughs> figurines. Yes. And their military figurines are just, just oh, uh, all... Yeah. You know, there's a there's a big fat Buddha fig figurine statuette in my garage, and I imagine it's a lot of those. It's a lot of those. So, but there there is a PowerPoint too, and definitely your picture is up on that PowerPoint. Mm. And the no fat chicks merch is up there. Yeah, that's a big issue. You're public enemy number one yeah. for the fat chicks. Can you give me a, a brief synopsis of the fat fat chick war going on right now? Sure. Well, it's kind of over, Bill. Uh, basically, everything that needs to be said about it has been said. Really long story short, we put out a podcast in December. And we forgot all about it. Where oh, I the went cutting. Open yeah, yeah, the, yeah. It was yeah. beautiful, right? Yeah, it was I mean, poetry. No, what I said. But, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, the reason, and then basically that resurfaced this summer and led to a cancellation effort. Uh, a, a fairly well coordinated cancellation effort. I don't know. It yeah, was unlike it was anything good. I'd ever experienced. But at the end, you've of the, experienced trolls before. But this yes. is next level shit. Yes, but at the end of the day, it's not though, Bill, because it's fat people. It's not racist, and it wasn't a sexual assault allegation. So really, who gives a shit? Shit. It's one of those uh, Me Too, or it's one of those cancellation efforts where you can just point the finger and laugh and keep poking fun at him. Yeah, it's weird how fat people have kind of been able to sk skate under the radar a little bit because <laughs> even with COVID, like that's what that's who's dying. Yes, but if you yeah. say it's fat people that yeah. are dying, yeah, yeah. you're a fattest. Or that something. is the legitimately that that's the data. It's fat people dying of, or a lot of fat people. Eighty percent, I think, of, of people who are obese mm -hmm. are wow. in hospital because of COVID. I mean, yeah. Wow. This is, I mean, yeah. like pigs have to worry about farmers with shotguns. <laughs> the girls who came after us have to worry about bats and viruses. So yeah, is a Carol man. a fat Karen? Is that what yeah. it is? It's, maybe, yeah. I would say a Carol's a fat Carol Karen. sounds like a rounded version of Karen. <laughs> yeah, and it's absolutely. got an O in it. Absolutely. Yeah. I like it. I, yeah, I like that. that. A bunch of Carol's. Carol is a fat Karen. I like that. I See if you can make that trend. But Bill, when I was talking about cutting them up, I just wanted to talk about cutting them up again. Bill, I remember you got in the mix in the comments Mm -hmm. During the heat of this whole thing, yeah, and the fat so the fat so's came after you. Can you tell us about that a little bit? Well, I mean, you posted the video that we did about how you guys get so much fucking pussy, yeah. And so I said, oh, which, that is, was, which is fucking awesome. It's by great. The the Rewatch, it's great. Rewatching that, weren't you like, holy fuck, this is sweet? It's fun. It's innocent. It's family friendly for about family friendly as you guys get. Yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, <laughs> it was offensive. You know what I mean? So I said that was a lot of fun. And the first thing was like, how dare you support a guy who who advocates the dismemberment or disembowelment <laughs> of of fat women or whatever? I don't think they use the word fat. I and think I don't say the word fat. I didn't say anything about disemboweling them. I wanted it to be a clean, surgical, painless slice down the middle. <laughs> my, my favorite attack by one of these uh, fat trolls was one of these girls was a overweight woman. She had BLM in her bio, 
and she wrote a comment under King Croc's photo, who merely has a, has a very, he's only appeared on this podcast a few times, and it was the word, one word, and it was rapist. That's... That's Can you believe mature. that? That's mature. She wants. To, she would love yeah. to call him a racist, right? Which yes. that's that's their that's their nuclear warhead. The P and right. the C are interchangeable. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that took me a second. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's you can always fall back like Larry Elder. I'm sure he's pissing a lot of people off running for governor right now. You can always call him a rapist. Yeah. I just saw in the L.A. Times today they're going after him for something he said about Gavin Newsom's wife. Oh, there we God. go. It's, what did he say about her wife? I didn't read the he article. Wants a boner? Don't She's give me hot. don't yeah. give me too much credit, Bill. I don't actually read the news stories. I just look at the headlines. But ba- so back to your thing. So I said that was a lot of fun. Thanks for having me. Something stupid and anodyne. And then like how do you, you were, support you this were guy? fishing for some follows. Be and honest, people, Bill. You were fishing for some follows. <laughs> no, I was just you trying to show my love and support, yeah. Danny. You were comment he supports. Whore. He supports. <laughs> <laughs> Try to show my love and support. So people but were follow like, follow Bill. So it started with like, how dare you support this guy? And then it was like, oh, he knows who he's supporting. You, know, I go, I, I go. I haven't seen the video because I hadn't seen the video yet. The rant, the rant, a comic rant. Yeah, right. You're not seriously going out there, right, and disemboweling girls. He like didn't Dexter. even say he wanted to do it himself. He wanted a samurai guy. Yeah, a professional. Yeah, a professional a guy who's, 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 who knows well. how to sharpen his sword. <laughs> yeah. who, who has the right swing and stuff. Yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah. So it was just like it was just a funny comic thing to do. <laughs> and what if they didn't like it? No big deal. So they were like, you know. You support him. You're a racist too. You're a rapist what too. The like they started fuck? going after me, yeah. saying that I'm. And I just so I just deleted my comment. I yeah. was like, Danny, I can't fucking. Yeah. No. I love you, man, but I can't be a part. I can't start a troll war with these fucking bitches. I can't okay. Yeah. So you yeah. really did nothing. I thought for some reason that you were defending us, saying that jokes are jokes, fat girls are. I started are fat. that. Okay. But then there was like, you, then yeah. it was like, you're a rapist too. Right. And then they start looking at your IMDb, yeah. your credits, your right. career. They go. Look at these fucking shitty things you've done yeah, with your yeah. career. You're like, Ugh, but the scary thing it. is, they find the director on Instagram and yes. message him, "Hey, don't hire this guy for any future projects." Crazy. Dude, they got to my girlfriend's college, and my girlfriend got a Title IX email, which I think has to deal with like rape situations. But basically, somebody had contacted UC Santa Barbara, said that I was raping and abusing my girlfriend, and oh they reached God. out to her. <laughs> So that's like all they could do to me, though, because I have so little real things you can go after because I'm yeah. completely self-employed and my parents don't give a shit. So all you can really do is try to fuck with my girlfriend and the people around me. Yeah. Or people like you supporting in the comments. <laughs> yeah. And I feel like cancellation is no longer a real thing. Like Tony Hinchcliffe, they try to cancel him. Yeah. And there's a big thing about he, his reps dropped him. But two weeks later, he's back on the road with Joe Rogan. Yeah, right. I think his reps take him back. It's yeah. all like shit on the DL. They're just doing it for appearances. Mm-hmm. All these woke fucking companies—they don't fucking care. Yeah, they just do it because they think it'll help their money, and it doesn't. Uh, yeah, the mo- just every company's just now. Uh, never mind. Yeah, they change their mind, but then they change it back just as easily. They change fucking, it back, but yeah. they do it like mm-hmm. on the DL, so you don't know. They don't exactly. make a big announcement about it. Yeah, exactly. Tony Hinchcliffe back on the road. Um, dude, my fucking mind just went completely blank. What was I going to say about Tony Hinchcliffe? <laughs> what What did he do exactly? It was a racist comment. Uh, I know. I saw. Racist. I saw what he said. I said. I saw exactly what he said. But I didn't it, know if there was some other context it, it was, of the night. It was kind of like you. Like you came in hot. Yeah. Mm. It, it It may not have been the funniest material out of both of your mouths. I, I but it I came think in it was hot, pretty and good. It was my funny. Stuff. My stuff. <laughs> and and said, and I think Tony's funny too, right? I like Tony Hinchcliffe. So yeah. both of you guys are funny, but it came in a little hot. People were a little bit taken. But who gives a fuck? That's yeah. the nature of being a, a, yeah. com- a comedian and yeah. ranting and all that shit. Right. You're going to rant everything that's completely, like, perfectly, you know, measured. And right. that's ridiculous. What's the worst thing you said, like, on stage that got, like, some booze or, like, like made some women shudder? What's the worst thing that you slipped up on? I mean, on I stage? say cunt all the time. Mm. You know cunt I mean? works it's for you. Like, there's so many great entries into cunt. It's like jujitsu. Mm. You have, like, you're going for the back joke. There's, like, seven different entries into cunt. You can mm-hmm. just say, like, Oh, you know, I don't say the N words offensive to black people. I don't say the C word because it's offensive to cunts like you. <laughs> or you can say, you say bitches. Oh, I should say, you can you say bitches now? You know, who hates the word bitches, cunts. So there's just so many ways you can just get into that word. Yeah, you, it, Bill Dawes' new material is fucking great, man. I've been, I've been, uh, he did a show for us. But um, also, uh, 
what are you just not worried about anymore? Do you think material like comedians are just they don't care anymore? They're saying anything they want on stage. What do you think is going on in comedy? Well, can I, can I maybe spec- can I specify yeah. a little bit what you're asking, Leo? Yeah. I'm curious because Bill, you straddle both worlds a little bit. Right. You do stand up, and then you also do mainstream acting gigs. Right. And I, so we've established now that it doesn't matter cancellation much to people like me and Leo who are doing our own thing, or to Tony Hinchcliffe who's primarily out of the mainstream. Yeah. What is in the mainstream, right. are they becoming a little bit more lenient or are they still really cracking down on anybody who um, has some negative tweets coming their way? Well, the thing is, I don't really know because if I'm up for something and I don't get it, I'll never get the feedback. It's because of this. Yeah. There are a few jobs I've lost because of my social media and things I've done and said in social media mm-hmm. that I've had to delete. Mm-hmm. I did um, <laughs> like Jay Leno had a thing called jaywalking back in the day. And yeah. I had a video where I was fucking with people on the street. And I'm not going to say the N word. It, it was the, it was it was the midget joke. And I go, oh midget. Yeah, oh, you can't say it. you got to be PC. Yeah, you got to call him a height N word. Yeah, yeah. Right, which is like you know they say Eskimos or snow N words. Yeah, like silly hacky joke. Yeah, but Jay Leno's people saw that and they're like, boom, and they I lost a job. How so do they explain it like to that. you? Well, basically, Jamie at the Laugh Factory called me. and Goes, buddy, buddy, why you say why you say the N word on video? And I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> Wait, man? who's who called you? Jamie Masada. Oh, okay, I thought that was a Jay Leno factor. impression. I don't know. Jamie, Jamie Masada. That's definitely that's a good impression. Of Jamie. Yeah, Masada. yeah. So, so yeah, I deleted that fucking, but it didn't matter. You know. So there are things that I'm it's, I've gone back and tried to delete tweets. And, dude, it just it's crazy because like there is so much footage of Quentin Tarantino saying the N word. Yeah, it's. His was said in a movie. Yours was said in a piece of comedic well, th- art. That's the thing. If you're doing it on TV or film, I just have a short right now that's doing the film festival route, and I say the N word like a dozen times in it because my character is trying to get killed. Is that by the black Octavia man. Spen- Spencer movie or no? No, 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 no. That's a feature. This is a short. Right. But I, I say the N word because I'm trying to get a black man to kill me so I can collect insurance for my family. That's the whole premise of the thing because I'm dying of cancer. Mm-hmm. And I say it, I'm bulletproof in that mm-hmm. situation because as an actor. There's another level of separation from it. Yeah. But for you, even though it's comedy, people will make it personally attached to Why are you to pointing you. You're the guy who said the N-word. <laughs> but I mean, <laughs> the things that you say, even though you're doing it, there is a space between who you actually are, what yeah. you're saying is comedy. In Hollywood, the working, you, working with you know? Octavia Spencer makes it reneges all of the N-words that you've ever said, I believe. Yeah. So, yeah. Exactly. She's, she's up there. How do you spell renege? <laughs> <laughs> I actually don't know, but it sounds just close to a bad thing. And if you it do does. it a lot, are you a, <laughs> <laughs> a habitual re? That's funny. Dino likes that one, huh? Yeah. Dino, why don't you laugh at that, huh? That's your kind of joke, Deans. Don't say um, anything awful. <laughs> uh, you could never. You never but know. That, is, where, that is where I feel like you really, truly, truly can't say anymore if you ever want to work mainstream. Yeah, it's yeah, it, it's weird. I mean, it's, it's so many comedians who I look up to that's, that's been something they've talked about in their act. Yeah. Was recently as 10 years, Doug Stanhope, Louis C.K., yeah. Nick DiPaolo. Those guys have all said that word. It's been said in films and books that I've read. And it's just crazy, as Doug Stanhope said, that a couple of syllables it just can't be uttered anymore. Two yeah. noises you make with your mouth in unison are no longer okay. Yeah, exactly. And I, yeah. I have a hard time wrapping my head around that. And I feel like the C word's okay because in other countries that word is used for everyone, men, women, and anyone. It's like, hey, yeah, good cunt. Ah, right. look at that. He's a good cunt. Look at Australians, that Australians, you know? right? Australian, English mm-hmm. people. Mm-hmm. So the word isn't necessarily gendered, as it were, but mm-hmm. also it's a behavioral thing. You're talking about someone's – you're not – it's not – Blankly sexist, mm-hmm. like men are douches and creeps. We got to give a word to women that fucking gets them. Mm-hmm. You know, Hell yeah, man, and that's the best. It's, yeah, it's got to be the best I, one. I got to tell you guys something right now. This is a true thing that Dino said to me when we were filming last Tuesday. Bill's going to be appalled by this, so I'll leave him out of it. I was talking about how in Los Angeles it sucks how on top of each other everybody is. I can hear my dog next door, the dog next door moaning. So Austin has to get up in the middle of a podcast and close the door. Mm -hmm. If you live in an apartment, it's even worse. You can hear your neighbors trotting around in high heels when they come home shit faced and they're about to blow some stranger. (laughs) Dino said, can I meet your neighbor? (laughs) 
<laughs> and no upstairs. Uh, probably some rats. There's probably a family of vermin up there. Mm-hmm. Dino said, though, that the only reason he wants property is so he can go outside and use the N-word without <laughs> repercussion. Dino, what is wrong with you? I couldn't even... Well, I, I didn't say that. Yes, you did. <laughs> you absolutely said that when we were filming last Tuesday. Nah. And I, I get, like, where you're coming from. You want to be able to say whatever you want in your house. I get self-conscious because I do a live Patreon stream in my bedroom and when I hear my neighbor's car door slam it's literally 10 vertical feet away from me and my windows cracked open for my AC unit so suddenly I have to start talking like a respectable respectable neighbor I understand that part but there seemed to be just it seems like he would take genuine glee in standing on his back lawn on his three acres and just screaming the n-word at the night sky well I mean who wouldn't let's be honest you know what I mean and I don't even mean that yeah. In a racist way. Yeah. I just mean in the taboo of everything. Yeah, it's like, like the most taboo <laughs> thing to do. That's I know true. people who listen to rap songs, like huge rap that they listen to in their car. Mm. And when the N-word comes up the rap song, as it often does, no, yeah. they go, Real. Eh, and they just go, mm, and they, they, by themselves, yeah. in their fucking Prius, they yeah. just don't say the word. The yeah, yeah sure. that's, you know what I mean? that's unacceptable. It's, just uh, say it. It's yeah. a song. Yeah, yeah. And it's it, almost more racist not to say it because you're like racist. protecting some fucking concept. Dude, I, I just, I hate it all. Like, and then also what sucks too is like the whole nigga, like which I feel comfortable saying still, versus the ER is it ridiculous that we differentiate between those two. Or is it? Yeah. I mean, it, it feels like you well, took a little bit of sandpaper to the back end of it. It's like and the it's, equivalent of like of, of blackface versus a white person impersonating a black person. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like when Jimmy Fallon did Chris Rock. That's not really black. We know yeah. it's not blackface. Yeah. But it's like Adam Carolla says, like, can the adults just have this conversation? Yeah. It's, that's not blackface. Yeah. It's oh. not like doing an Al Jolson, like, it's like you're doing an impersonation of Chris Rock. Yeah. Are we saying that white people can no longer do impersonations of black people? I guess so. That's what we're saying, which is fine. Yeah. I thought it was Carl Malone. That was who Jimmy. Did, that was Jimmy Kimmel. Did, they, oh, they that was Kimmel. Kimmel all, in the 90s, it was Kimmel happening all the Carl time. Malone. Carl Malone, Chris Rock. Yeah. Yeah. Kimmel, Kimmel did uh, Carl Malone says, and then he would just <laughs> yeah. proceed to give a, just a stupid piece of advice on The Man Show. The Man That's Show funny. was great. Yeah. We walked by Jimmy Kimmel Live uh, with Cigar Guy recently. And Cigar Guy was like, fuck Jimmy Kimmel, dude. That guy is such a puss. <laughs> and I will always respect him for the stuff he did with Adam Carolla on the back radio the day, or on yeah. the man show back in the day. And they're still friends, so I feel like I got to respect him. But it is frustrating how many formerly cool comics now are just owned by corporate America. Mm-hmm. And all they can do is make fun of the, uh, the democratically approved uh, news points that day. Right. Now, guys like that, like, Bill, you might know more about this being in, super involved in Hollywood. I mean, like The Rock, for example, the guys at the top, are, are they are they basically paid to be voices for the left? Are they nudged that way? I mean, I just think that that's what Hollywood is. Yeah. For, it's been that way for a long time. There's no room for right-wing thought or Republicans in, mm-hmm. in Hollywood, really. Mm-hmm. So even if you are that way, like Chris Pratt is a perfect example. I mean, right. he's, he's right-wing. He's Republican. He's, he's right-wing. married to a Schwarzenegger. Right. Wait, Schwartz African-American. <laughs> <He's>, uh, <laughs> but he, he's, he's, he is never going to actually publicly come out about his... He just mm-hmm. won't show up at certain, like, left-leaning events mm-hmm. sometimes right. and people are trying to drag him he just stays out of it but no one's gonna be like ben shapiro and come out and like i'm a proud republican you know no one's right. gonna say that <laughs> no. the ben shapiro voice yeah adam carolla had a pretty funny uh thought about this he said the way to determine if somebody is a republican in hollywood is if you just don't know their political beliefs That's if you true. if you go to their wikipedia and there's no activism or political belief section they're a republican if they just yeah. don't talk about politics, they're a Republican in Hollywood, yeah. most likely. And the problem with the Republican Party, because, you know, that's one of the jokes I say. I said after getting uh, COVID, it messed with my heart. It made it a little uh, Republican. And uh, <laughs> I go, not all the way, but it just it moved the needle. It, we're going to move the needle. Right. But then you go to Texas, you live in Texas, and now the needle's fucking going back the other way. Because, yeah. you know, all the fuck, the band... There's shit with gays, there's shit with abortion, yeah. and there's shit with weed. Like, give it up. Yeah. Let gay people be gay people. Uh, don't let Austin hear you saying that. Austin, S- he's been on this like insane pro-abortion war path lately. Yeah, really? yeah, yeah. It's been. Good I'm for try- you. I'm, I'm pro-abortion try- too. No, 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 no. Oh, a pro-life war path. Oh, Excuse pro-life, me. Pro-life, pro-life. I, I'm out of my head today. Yeah. yeah until he gets a girl <laughs> pregnant. Until you get that fucking yeah, fat chick. Never sorry. 
That just, dude, he's so deluded. He thinks he would raise it as his own. Really, dude? He just you never get, banged like, a stripper in Tupelo. You That's get the the, you get that. Maybe chick. you shouldn't be banging fucking strippers in Tupelo. Shit, dude, that chick, you, you might have double teamed a girl on the beach. What if with you got Sinar her pregnant, guy? dude? What if that girl got pregnant? What if the girl that you you know had a little fun with at Brooks's house? What if you got her All pregnant? Right. My thing with the the abortion thing is just that there isn't. There isn't an argument that's like pro-abortion that actually is like a sound argument because you can't pick a specific day that it's a life or not. It's always some subjective, emotional, well, what if this, what if that? And I just think that's not a good argument. I don't really hate people that are pro-abortion or anything. I just think, you know, come at me with something that's actually like... I, I have a good argument. A fact. We should, abortion should be legal until the 20th or 21st uh, trimester. That's when they're about six years old. Six years old, that's yeah. When you know, that's when you know if you've made a mistake. Yeah. Right? That's where you're like, ugh. It's, as it's, long as it's, 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 it's autistic. About, you know. about first grade, you can see how they hit a ball. <laughs> there we go. Winter ball. Uh, you can tell what time for tall they're going to be. Abortion. By that, by six, at least you can you tell see, how tall they're going to be. Now also, you're using objective facts that I can agree with. Like, mm. you don't develop memories until you're five. So yeah. before that, like. And also, well, you get you can see how much orthodontia the kid's going to need. Big overbites. It's going to cost you thousands. A lot of money. <laughs> I, I also, I also he think. He might be gay. I don't know. No, no. Come on, Leo. Okay, too far? <laughs> Maybe. All right, God sorry. damn it, Leo. It was, we're right on the line. You had Holy to go away. Holy shit. I also think that for you, abortion should joke? be mandatory. But, you know, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> You're a eugenicist now? <laughs> no, I'm not a eugenicist. I just look like one. <laughs> <laughs> How much did that fucking thing cost you from Air One? That is the oh, most expensive Jesus supermarket like in the, the world. It's like the... The, it's a like coffee that right. they put. They dribble some shit in it, and they right. charge you seven dollars. Nice, oh dude. my god! Yeah. Let's uh, let's. Bill's got an argument here for you, Austin Schlosser, about abortion. Let's hear it. Yes. My art. Okay. This th this is my argument, right? Oh my god! We want to protect a life. We want to save a life, have a life, and then you go into the world, and it's fucking shitty. Like. You're doing these babies a favor by killing them. Like, I, I never understood be that because then every single person that's just like, like, you know, poor people, their lives suck. They're better off dead. Like, let's just start, you know. And? Like, it's just, that's, so. <laughs> I'm pretty sure there's a lot of poor people who would disagree with you and be like, no, I'm actually glad yeah, that I well, wasn't killed. What? The difference is a poor person has a thought to disagree with me. Plus, a, per, a poor person in America is like the richest, like top 1% of the whole world. So then we might as well just kill everyone okay, in the so whole let, world. Okay, so let me ask you this. Let me ask you look this. like that in Bakersfield. I'll say if, that. If a ba so you have a baby, let's say the baby's four months old and it gets aborted. What's the problem? The baby is going to be like in wherever heaven, or be like, "Well, oh, darn it, I didn't get to live." Like, I don't, I don't, we, I don't have any kind of ethical argument. I don't have any kind of ethical argument. It's a constitutional argument as to whether or not you're not allowed to end a human life. It's in the constitution, and if you can't decide when it becomes a human life, how about this? Then, then you have to at least come to some kind of decision. It can't be this weird. It's like the argument for slavery. It's like this weird, vague states' rights issue, and. Really, if you're dealing with whether this? or not something's when, human, when a baby can can live outside of the womb, at, and that is a very that's a measured time when the baby is able to live out of the womb. It's usually like around like five months or so, like that. When it, why not make that the time? Because before then, it can't live. Outside yeah, of the womb. well, like eighty five percent of people that are like pro life, like they don't. I mean, pro choice, they don't want to put any kind of distinguisher on it for the most part. They usually just say it's a woman's right to choose. And then d babies can be born like a, a very different periods of time. Yeah. You know, it's still vague, but that is a better like point. I also like. But I mean, it, from one day thing, to the next, the when does it become thing a is life? It's ridiculous because like if, if I got a girl pregnant and then you take the test at like 10 weeks, I think, to determine if the a kid has like genetic markers for Down syndrome or whatever. Mm -hmm. And you go, oh, your kid's going to have Down. Not to say that Down syndrome, they're not, they sh life and, but like. I'm not gonna clean it out. There's some actors, well, the, yeah. some the, Down the syndrome are, actors, man, the, doing better than yeah. me. And it's and not a six great, weeks like, bill. It's 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 a heartbeat bill. And then typically, like you, it's determine, a heartbeat. <laughs> no, in Texas, or, or it's you a pick six up that rhetoric. Bill. It's literally a six week bill. No, it's if you can detect a heartbeat. Okay. I'm from Texas. Fuck, if a you, fish has a heartbeat. <laughs> What well, does a heartbeat mean? It's that, just their body doing something no, involuntary. They change it to heart activity. Typically, it's a different. It's heart activity. So that's anything. I huh? say. I say. Everybody in America. Well, something that's not alive must be forced activity. to take a pill. True. 
I say we get monthly injections, then make it so you'll spontaneously miscarry 50% of the children you have. <laughs> I say let's keep everybody honest. I think we're overpopulated. That might be with the people COVID. value their shitty kids far too much. Most people having babies shouldn't have babies. For sure. So let's just, just sweeping 50% of the time, your baby is going to come out with eyeballs on its stomach, and then it's going to cry a lot and die 15 minutes later. How about that? Well, either way, I'm not going around saying that we need to ban abortion or anything. I'm, I would... Mainly just joking you, about he, people's really dumb arguments. You tried. He did. A, he did an anti-abortion bit in the video I filmed with him on Tuesday. He went oh. into an improvised anti-abortion bit. Really, I had it was him funny. Excited okay, about so it. Bill, it was really funny. Quickly, Bill. He leaked video of my penis onto the internet. Yeah. I pulled out my cock and peed in a bottle on this podcast. On this podcast. He was too stoned to censor it. It went up, and now a bunch of animals on Reddit have it. Oh yeah. To make him, how does it look? Will you fly? I Not think it looks great. great. I think it looks great. He's got long fingers. I think it looks great. No well, we correlation. Should, well, I can't. I wouldn't be able to find it right now. But, but we should show it to you, Austin, to make him uh, feel some sort of remorse because it's hard to penetrate that marijuana clouded brain of his. I took him to Ross, made him get a bunch of women's clothing. Then I took him to Home Depot, got a 50-gallon garbage can, made him take an ice bath in it, wall dressed like a woman, get out, get naked, and then get photos taken. So he, the idea would be he'd have a tiny dick and look like a cross-dresser, and I'd have photos to post on the internet. <laughs> I have those now to do whatever what I please with. While he was in the ice bath, though, he took this doll I made him hold just to make it look a little pedophile and he started, like, killing it and being like, ah, oh, this is what people who are pro-fucking-abortion want to do to kids. Ugh. And it, wow. it's, well, there's no chance we're going to use it in the video. Hey, what were you doing? Tell us what you were doing. Dude, it was pretty funny. Man. No. <laughs> it was, well, for one part, so I only said it because someone behind me said something about abortion while I was in the ice bath. And then I was like, oh, yeah, guys, remember, pro-choice. And it was the day Texas passed that stupid bill, so everyone was talking about it. And I had a baby doll that you could rip the leg off. So I go, look, guys, start with one leg, rip the leg oh. off. Then you start, and then you grab the head, and you pop it. <laughs> like, it was just like a stupid joke. I wish we had Dude, an aborted pretty funny. fetus <laughs> mounted like a marlin on the wall of this room. <sighs> i got a video idea, Danny. I what love we, abortion. What? We set up a, a drive through abortion clinic yeah. right on, you know, on the border of Texas and Oklahoma. Yeah. See how many women we can get. I like it. I mean, it, <laughs> we could. It might be a little expensive to rent the RV. We could just get a tent and put <laughs> up a tent. handwritten sign. Yeah, exactly. At the we end of the day, a, I think it's, it's all about sex. I mean, really, whatever you want to say, it's about sexism. Because if men could get abortions... Yeah. We would do it all the time. We'd have nicknames for it. Mm -hmm. Comics on stage would be going like, yo, dude, the other day I was getting a baby sucked out of my dick. You know, yeah. comics would be bragging oh, about it. Fuck, dude. You know what I mean? Yeah. It would be constant. Like, there'd be, there'd be technology. To, you'd have a wand just yeah, to kill done. your baby if men could do it. All right, man. You can... With your if ands and your butts and your emotional arguments. Why do you bro? like babies, emotional? dude? Babies fucking I'm just fucking suck. with you. <laughs> babies suck, dude. <laughs> like, uh, why? Why are you? Uh, I mean, uh, Austin, I'm never, not on a warpath to never end flown abortion. On Spirit Airlines. Yes, it's babies just, are terrible. It's just funny how and we they cry every, in Spanish. If on that you've note. watched a video <laughs> of an abortion, it's they fucking run away from the thing and then they grab its they don't arms run. and legs. No, they stop. literally I don't want to hear this. I don't want to hear swim. this. Have you seen a video of a birth? come to face to face with reality and watch no, the shit right. and then make a decision on it? Because I'm telling wanna. you, once you do, you're gonna be like, look, holy shit, this is, is kind of killing a baby. Up. It is killing a baby. But who cares? Yeah. I like that's that argument point. better. That it is that's killing better. a baby. Yeah. I'm pro people just saying I want to kill babies because then at least oh you're not God. making some stupid if and I don't want to kill babies, but I'm just okay with a baby being killed inside yeah. the womb. Should we make Austin that's get his fine. tubes tied? Should we make him get a vasectomy for video? By the way, you can get a vasectomy. It. They can reverse it. God damn, reverse get a vasectomy. Yeah. I've I'd actually ever. considered that. Yeah, it does I, sound yeah. kind of nice. Not a bad idea. Just think about in the schemes of everything. Think of all the majestic creatures that live on this planet. Dolphins, blue whales. People kill dolphins all the time, mostly the Japanese. What's the difference between a hyper-intelligent dolphin and some girl in South Carolina who works at a nail salon who is having a baby out of wedlock because she got gang-banged three months ago? What's the Jesus fucking... Christ. Like, is, is one life form really different from the other? I would rather keep the dolphin and it's young, personally, because they're out in the ocean and they don't bother me. You see, the thing is, is I don't it. really care if it's necessarily legal or not. It's how normalized it is. And you will have that same girl in South Carolina 
will cry at the idea of a fertilized chicken egg being cracked, but then perfectly okay with just tons of human babies just being killed, well, basically. Wait, why, and it's why would she cry at the idea of the egg? Is she a vegan? Chicks are like that, dude. If you were like, this egg's fertilized, I'm going to crack it, they'll probably start crying. <laughs> what Christ. chicks do you hang out with? Yeah, what? You literally what? hang out with chicks. I've never cracked an egg in front of a girl to see if she'd cry. Or like ask a girl to kill, like, like a, yeah, get their are, dog and abortion. I, like I'm pretty sure pro they'd be... Animal pro-abortion women out there is what you're saying and that's true there yeah women would be more willing to get themselves an abortion in 21 in 2021 than give their dog an abortion that's they would true. be like i can't get my dog an abortion that's fucked up i i'm just telling you right now Austin. do they no, have dog abortions yeah they do nothing really? they're would not common me, though here's what i want to do i want to fucking go downtown where it's super urban i want to take a massive elastic band tie it to two telephone poles <laughs> Put a one-month-old baby Jesus in the sweet Christ. spot of the elastic band and just fire it into a brick wall. Oh my God, Danny! I, once again, you went too you far. Went too We're gonna get far. trolled now. I would love to just kill a baby <laughs> Damn it, with a dude. giant slingshot down there on Third Street. They're somewhere. doing it again. I would love like those only do that inside the yes. stomach. Yes. Yeah. Or, so if I'm willing to do it downtown, where everybody can film me and see the poor thing splattered against the would you wall. have a God, stunt? Would you have me. a stunt baby to, to test out the contraption first? Of course not. I would go through many babies to get it right. <laughs> that reminds me of a Daniel Tosh joke that would probably be canceled. He was like, you, "People take the morning after pill, and it was like killing some women." It was like. Talk about two birds, one stone. He <laughs> 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 was so, dude. He was funny as fuck. Do you know Tosh at all, Daniel Tosh? Uh, no, I did. I, I met him one time. I said, "You like how I called him by his last name? Like I know him." You know, you know Tosh? Tosh. I played poker Danny, with Tosh. Yeah, I, everyone called him Danny. Who knows? Him. Uh, I asked him. I said, "Can I feature for him on the road?" He like looked at me like I was like ridiculous. He, I think he's like a little bit on the spectrum. Yeah. I think that's part of his Asperger's. Genius, is he's probably like a, like like Eric Andre, who I fucking love, is like he's a sociopath. Really? I respect his opinion. I think he's just like he's just like a sociopath. Like he doesn't have emotions for other human beings. Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. How do you know that? Well, that's what that's what people who know him have told me. He just doesn't fucking care. I listened to him on a podcast, and he seemed like a pretty grounded dude. He meditates and is into spirituality. Yeah, there are a lot of grounded people who are sociopaths. That's true. <laughs> but he's a sociopath, huh? No, that's... no, no. That's just what I heard. Like he just doesn't have like the emotional capacity. Like when people get. And, I mean, that's why he's so successful. People get fucked up and injured and ruin their lives. He's like, mm. <laughs> well, mm. there's a lot of fat women saying that you're a sociopath, Danny. Just so yeah, you know. but I mean, if you're a lot of the women who came after us, and I'm thinking of one in particular, the obese, obese lady who was talking about getting our show banned from Pan Pacific Park. Mm. That lady probably can't leave her house more than twice a week because of the effort she must expend to do so. Yeah, Dude, she's I, a forklift. I mean, anybody. Probably her hormones aren't working right in her brain. I'm sure yeah. she sleeps like 18 hours a day. Her idea of who's a sociopath and who isn't is irrelevant. And that's a lot of the people well, who are coming after us. That's a problem, too, with, with obesity, too, because a lot of it is just people. It's not some people. It's not their fault. It really isn't. It's genetic or they're raised by shitty parents who fed them fucking fast right. food mm -hmm. until they were like 12. Mm -hmm. And now they just can't beat it. And there's thyroid conditions. So some, but I think it is kind of like a disability. Mm -hmm. And some people are just lazy pieces of shit. Mm -hmm. But either way, I I definitely think like you just got to be fucking careful because they're the ones who are at home all day because they're not getting exercise. That's true. You know what I mean? True, That's true. They have. It takes a long time for them to get anything done online though because they hit three keys when they turn. The fat, <laughs> fat fingers. I don't know. Yeah. Someone <laughs> posted on a video I posted. Some woman posted. Uh, you're the male Amy Schumer watching this video. I didn't laugh once. Wow. And I looked and she was heavy so I said well it must be hard to laugh with food in your mouth <laughs> and, and she just started com and I just fucking had to delete the, yeah. fucking the male <laughs> Amy Schumer no dude like, uh, without the money um, the fucking what, what was that I got? dude I'm buying fucking memories I'm, I'm off today I think it's a lack of cigar are you smoking guy. weed no well I actually did take a bunch of edibles this weekend I went horseback riding with my girlfriend how was that um the only real it was fantastic it was actually was it like truck truck can you actually ride can oh we uh, but i wish you could gallop i wish also they i could shoot a bow and arrow off <laughs> one of them i just want to do some more generally medieval stuff yeah but no it was simply a uh, a trail ride up around malibu yeah very expensive i went with a luxury package but the only real observation i have is just the tour was led by one of those horse girls is there a genre of girl more slutty than the horse girl? No. I dated a horse girl. Maybe it was the horse girl because she works. What was her name? This girl. I don't want to say the Sarah, girl's name. Was it? Was it, it, it Sarah? You would be able to Google she the hot? company that does this. She was cute. 
And There's I just, a lot of them are hot. Just all I mean, I wasn't attracted to her, but I could tell like she probably goes out to bars and fucks a ton of dudes because she's a slutty horse girl. Mm. Also, if you're on a horse all day, just fucking like yeah. that, and you're, you're looking eagle. at horse cocks all day, yeah, you got to be horny. Horses are phallic in nature in many ways. Yeah, yeah their nose. Mm-hmm. I, you get, there's probably a girl out there who's been nose fucked by <laughs> a stallion. I, I think the number of women that have actually had sexual thoughts or activities with horses is really underrepresented. Yeah. More yeah, than yeah. that one fucking girl who got fucked by a horse and you porn back in the day. That, that was the guy, yeah. right? Oh, was the guy, Mr. Mr. Hands? Hands. Yeah, yeah. That's he died. Right. They're probably women too. Uh, yeah, he died. Yeah, there's a girl who died too. You oh, know, okay. I don't even I don't even mind Mr. Hands because he just wanted a giant horse cock. It, I get it. That's his thing. He wants a giant horse cock. And that. What I don't get is the two guys who are like helping the horse yeah. and guiding the dick into his ass. What's like, in it what for them? What are they getting for? You know what I mean? They're, they look happy in the video? I've never seen this video. Uh, don't watch it, man. It'll ruin I your know. fucking life. I've seen it. I... I masturbated to it. You, I know you did. <laughs> you sick son of a bitch. This is this is proof that um, any niche. I mean, if you want to start a podcast, if yeah. you want to start a clothing company, it can be about uh, surreptitiously visiting rural farms and fucking the horses. It yeah. can be about that, and you'll find an audience. Because those three guys, four guys, one is holding the camera. I, I assume that's what they did. They just staked out farms, and they probably hit. What do you think? Oh one, one a month. I, I, you can't. Farmers are armed. You can't do this mm. willy nilly. Do they rent the horse? Do they sneak yeah. into a stable? Do they buy a horse to do it? Dude, sneaking into the stable would be really dangerous. <laughs> they could. That, I mean, they kill. They could easily kill you with one swift kick. Well, right? I'm talking about the farmer, dude. Because oh. farmer, like, ev- like every farmer has a shotgun. Oh, yeah. for sure. There's no chance the farmer doesn't have weapons. I mean, for the purpose of putting down horses, probably yeah. when yeah. they get crazy or when they're too old. Who do yeah. you think? Who, how funny is it? The guy that has his gig in Mexico is to recruit the girls that get fucked by the horses. That there's a guy in Mexico that has to recruit. We should we should do that for a bit. <laughs> so, you speak Spanish. I dude. do. I could do it. I could do it. I'm, I'm, I'm writing it down. We're doing that. Uh, we have a horse. Uh, do you want to? Uh, what? We pay a lot of money. Uh, um, okay. Yeah, you guys Leo, are small. Like we, you like horses. You like animals. Do you like a horse or girls for uh, donkey shows? Yeah, but my my chick. Need- the whole time we are the whole time we are riding. I can just tell from this girl's personality and the fact that she was like gen. gen- generally in shape and like a good looking girl. It's like this girl fucks so many guys in so many ways. Yeah. Like let, let's share our experiences with horse girls because the first girl ever to lick my asshole was wow. a horse girl. Wow. She yeah. came, I met her at a gay bar. <laughs> we used to go to gay bars, like our little wolf pack of straight guys that would infiltrate faces in downtown Sacramento. That was the name of the bar. Just because we knew there were drunk single girls with their guard down and it was a really high percentage place to go pick up straight pussy. We would go there all the time. I met this girl, got her number, made out with her. I got hammered like two weeks later and just messaged her on a weekday because it was my birthday and I was getting drunk. She said, oh my God, just got done with a 15 hour shift at the stable, but I'll drink a Red Bull and come out right now. Oh my God. This girl ends up just, just, coming to the house, grabbing the bottle of wild turkey and just slamming, not all of it, but taking a big three, four second pull. We go out, keep getting drunk. We come back. She licks my ass, lets me fuck her in the ass. She goes straight to the ass? She, without any provocation on my part. All all fours or legs up. She legged up me. Legged up. That's tough because you've been out all night. Yes. You're sweating in your underwear. You yeah. didn't shower or anything like the, that. The one I remember this day perfectly, though, it was one of those rare days for a guy where I hadn't shit all day, though. Yeah. So uh, there was no chance of there being any residual. You had a clean poopiness. balloon knot going on. A, pl- a completely clean balloon knot. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, she went for it. And then I fucked her in the ass. And uh, while I was doing that, she reached back and tried to stick a finger up my ass, too. Oh, wow. Bless her heart, she couldn't quite what reach. What the hell? But What's her name and email address? <laughs> <laughs> even even uh, crazier, Bill, I saw her because I was a bouncer at this uh, club in Sacramento called The Park. And I was so immature back then and so insecure that once I hooked up with a girl once... I would cut her off completely, not because I was like, oh, fuck her. I don't need her. It was a, a way of avoiding sure. intimacy yeah. because if she got to know the real guy if who she I was you first, then what? 
then Absolutely. who are you? You're nobody. And if she went out with me two or three more times, she definitely would have initiated the dumping just because that's what I had going on in my life at that yeah. point. Nothing. So I saw her out when I was working as a security guard. Yeah. I saw her come to the club and I could tell she was trying to make eye contact, strike up a conversation. And I was just, I, nope, avoid eye contact, work at the far quadrant of the bar so I don't have to see her. But I couldn't help but see her one night aggressively making out with another chick in a VIP booth. And that's when Ooh. I realized... Horse girls are fucking skanks. She sounds like my dream girl. I'm not gonna fucking lie. By the way, when did ass? Here's the thing, because I'm I'm a little bit older than you guys. I feel like <laughs> asshole licking has become a thing now. Because when I yeah. was like in my 20s, I never had my asshole licked, mm. and now I feel like g- girls go for it. Mm-hmm. Like out of the, it used to be a thing like. Oh man, yo, when a girl sucks your dick, she's gotta fucking like deal with the balls. She gotta suck your balls. You're like, oh my god, yeah, a ball sucker. Yeah, yeah. And now it's like they're going just lower. Then it's sure. like the taint. Now it's up the asshole. It's, pretty soon they right. gotta lick your lower back. It, it's <laughs> like uh, <laughs> back the, of your neck, the the vestigial tail area back there. Yeah, it's like it's like a Ryan's belt. It's like it used to be the, like the first star in the constellation, the cock, and now we've moved on to the balls. The balls is still standard, but asshole, I don't think it's as ubiquitous. As you're making it out to be, Bill, I can only think of like two girls, maybe three, whoever licked my ass completely on their own, of their own volition. <laughs> like it, ha- it actually happened at that club, the park. One time a girl, after a full eight hour shift, she just threw my legs back in her hotel room after my shift. She gave me her phone number. I went there. It was right across the street. She went for it all on her own and just just went for this hairy, sweaty, probably, um, what is it called when there are still some flakes of toilet paper there? Oh, Dingleberries? Dingle, oh, no, no. Dingleberried asshole. Thank you, Bill. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So, But that, I think only three. What about you, Leo? How many girls have gone for it without any provocation from you? You probably have. You probably have a ha- like your actual hole probably is like a sea urchin. You probably got some fucking. I got a lot of hair on my some ass. Some Argentinian right? asshole. Oh yeah. Oh hair. yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah, man. I would say two women went for it. They were both older and a little, you know. I would say sexually promiscuous. Only two though. Only two just went for it, man. Otherwise, it was like, oh, can I try this? And it was like a girlfriend, you know. They're like, like I'd like to try this one. Day. So two in Leo's blowjob sample is knocking on the door of a thousand. <laughs> That's mm. saying something. Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, I feel like, <laughs> I'm, I don't I know, man. I'm not, I'm not, a, I'm not like too uh, on the feminine side. Maybe if I was a little bit more like a, a Dino, it's, yeah, I feel like women might go for his asshole more than they go for mine. Dino, did you get uh, your asshole licked by that fangirl? Hell no. Dude, so some fan, some, she's a psycho. Yeah. There's no way a stable woman would leech on to, latch on to Dino like this. But a fan has decided she likes the boy, and I believe she called into the show and said she wanted to lick his ass. Yeah. And he denies it, Bill. He does not want this woman to lick his ass. Why not? Dude, I don't want my asshole eaten. That, but but period, has it, it just, happened yet? You show girls your asshole. First of all, it doesn't not make my you own... gay, weirdo. Yeah, it's that's what he thinks. Zone. That's no, what it he doesn't. thinks. It's not even about, like, gay. It's just, like, weird. It's like... I don't want her touching my asshole. That's like, what I thought when I was a young lass like you. Right. And then you have a girl who knows what they're doing and right. does it right. And you're like, if I let go of the inhibitions and I just fucking relax and maybe smoke a little bit of weed and just let it go. It's fucking, it's really into, and the orgasms you get when there's ass play involved are just Bigger and better. Let me just tell you, uh, it's true. It doesn't it make you fucking gay. You gotta get make over that. Do you know? Look, when you get older, you're gonna get to a place where you're like, oh, dude, I've experimented a lot. I've had a lot of sex now. It's time to start something a little different. It's try. It's it's time to experiment a little bit, and then you're gonna do the ass play, and then you're gonna be like, oh man, look at this. This is incredible. Could, and then you're gonna you're gonna thank us later because you're just holding on to these these like weird archaic belief systems that right. it that anything regarding your ass is is a homosexual activity. Oh, that's, and what that's we, just yeah. not it's the just truth. Gross. It's an ass. It's full of poop. No, well, it's not. You, you it's, can clean it out. They have enemas at the I'm, scene. You want, yeah, yeah, they have enemas. Now you want me to enema my asshole? Well, no, if you really, if you're worried about that, you can enema your asshole. But if not, there are studies. How am I supposed to look at the girl in the face? After she licked my shit-filled asshole. It's not shit-filled. Yeah, how about it, make sure it's not yeah, shit-filled? Yeah, make sure it's not enema. shit-filled. You don't have to. Listen, what I'm saying is it there are there are there's data out there, Dino, that shows that the asshole has less bacteria than the mouth. 
Yeah. That's, a, that's actually that's you true. you brush your fucking teeth. It's because we fucking eat food. I did, when's the last time you brushed your teeth? Yeah, seriously. This morning? I don't floss. Did you floss, I don't think you did. I doubt you flossed. <laughs> you motherfucker. Did you floss? When was the last time you brushed your asshole? See, well, Dino, morning. Dino, I really like you, but when we're talking about abortion again, I mean, I can't... I don't see Dino as having much difference between him and... And like a, a fawn, mm. like I mean, what is your what does your day consist of? You get up at some unspecified time, you eat some some fucking takis, just mm-hmm. chips. You smoke some weed, you jack off, you hold a camera, and you go home and go to sleep. Like your life is the same as I don't know a, a rainbow trout, a bullfrog, an amoeba. Yeah, dude, he's basically it's an way animal. Easier Maybe. those an amoeba. Dude, animals <laughs> have it like shit. Every single day is like hell. They like. Are gonna get eaten, dude. So you're strengthening my argument. You're less than an animal because you don't fi- find your own food. You have no survival instinct. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I do nothing. It's fucking awesome. Yeah, you're basically a fucking animal. You're a gamer, dude. Is that, is that what you are? Would you say you're a gamer? No, because I'm not good at games. So what do you? What would you say? What would you label yourself as? Uh, lazy. That is. But I could see Dino getting a lot of tail because look, yeah, he's got the fucking nice little uh, Adolf Hitler comb over it. No, he's got the, he's got the <laughs> nice flock. Of, he's got great hair, great hair, yeah, nice eyebrows going on. Mm-hmm. He's not he's not a bad looking kid. No, nope. he he's unintimidating. He's skinny. He's got a nice smile. I see a lot of girls who are sharks that would go after that. Dude, we talked about this on the Patreon podcast last week. He's got a giant penis too, Bill. <laughs> So really, yeah. Bill, it's it's he has. So a they giant both penis. have a giant penis. Yeah. No, there. no. Austin, One's bigger than the other. Once the picture I took of Austin gets out, that myth will be dispelled forever. But Dino, why don't you? Uh, <laughs> cool. Why no, don't you stand up and show no Bill Dawes your penis? Why don't you show him your penis? No females in here. No, it's there's not. no female. He'll do anything if there's a girl here. Why do you think everything is gay? Jesus Christ, man. Because he loves God. Dude, just, the, the thing that Danny just wants to see my cock too much. Maybe <laughs> like does. just Danny. Is that impressive? See. It's pretty big. Danny to him, is not allowed to see my cock anymore. I mean, here's how I'll put it, Bill. <laughs> he is every rich gay man's dream boy. Mm. Just a Twink. skinny little twinky guy with a big dangler, a big meaty thick dangler. The asshole. His fucking Instagram handle is Big D Dino. Yeah. It's That's hilarious. your Instagram yeah. handle? Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. what does he have to lose, Bill? Yeah, exactly. What, is, what, what does he have to, to fucking lose? Yeah. Like he's gonna like he's gonna be at a cocktail party or networking somewhere. Like, oh yes. <laughs> Bill, Let us exchange I'm never gonna Instagram. run for president now. <laughs> the fucked up thing is Dino would be one of those guys in the acting world, Bill, that would just go his first two things he'd go for, he'd land like a reoccurring role in the second yeah. fucking thing he you went piece for. Of shit. Yeah, he is a piece of Why shit. Why is that? How that's just the luck the luck of the Irish sometimes. How man. often do you get girls DMing you like, what's the big D about? You have my bait. It, do you get that a lot? <laughs> I mean, I don't know. It's actually pretty funny whenever you give a girl your Instagram. It's like, oh, it's a uh, Big D Dino, and they're like, Big D, why? You, <laughs> what the fuck? That's you probably like, send oh, dick you got a big cock. unsolicited, don't you? No, no I don't send. That's Leo. That's, that's just I'm a good that's Christian. Still me. Boy. Still, still you? No. Yeah, yeah I've learned it. my lesson. Yeah, that's that's Leo. We're I've talking. My you're talking about the luck of the Irish. Yeah. I I was. First of all, I was listening to the Tim Dillon podcast and he was talking about the D'Amelio show. Mm. So my girlfriend and I watched it this weekend when we were high on a couple edibles. Okay. Charlie D'Amelio gets a pass because she has a tangible skill. Mm -hmm. She's been dancing competitively since she was three. Mm -hmm. The perfect platform just happened to emerge when she was young and pretty. Mm -hmm. She blew up, not hating on it. She has a skill. She earned it. The girl, who I need to be very careful what I say right now, because I was going to vividly describe how this person theoretically should die. Oh, but the, the girl who upsets me, I'll put it this way, is her sister, who admits in the show, like, yeah, I thought her, her the girl is like a deeper voice than me, by the way. No way. Dixie D'Amelio, like, yeah, so I saw my sister TikToking, and I was like, this is stupid. But then she got like a bunch of followers, and I was like, oh, hey, hey, TikTok, yeah. And I started putting out videos too, and now I'm rich. And now, like, no. like Giorgio Armani, I'm doing a show for them, and then I have a music career now. This is my apartment. She's so entitled. No. And bro. so, like, yeah, I'm fucking rich. Of course Did I'm rich. Did you sing? Uh, no. I see, there's a clip of her with her vocal coach in the show and in that clip she's singing 
well and I know it's doctored. Yeah. I, because I, my mind will not let me accept that this girl <laughs> who has, she's more baritone than Leandro. I can't accept that this girl can sing well. But what really pissed me off wasn't even Dixie, who, let's be honest, achieved fame just completely by virtue of the genetic lottery. Mm -hmm. She happened to be related to her sister, Charlie. Even worse than her is her fucking boyfriend, Dixie's boyfriend, this douchebag named Noah Beck. Yeah. This fucking guy started posting TikToks in 2020. So right at the start of the pandemic, which everybody in this room, with the exception of Dino, has been working on their craft much, much longer than that. I mean, right. Bill... Fucking for Forever. two decades, probably. Yeah. Me for about a decade. Leo's been at the acting thing for a long time, too. Mm -hmm. I just thought, what? a guy who's a mil multimillionaire now started his journey during the pandemic? That already makes me want to grab the nearest yes. firearm and put it in my mouth. Mm -hmm. But then I read this. <laughs> I read this. They were criticized for private jetting to the Bahamas, him and Dixie, for a vacation. And they asked, they're like, what about COVID protocols? And he's like, oh, just the last year's been so stressful. I just needed to unplug. <laughs> so let me get this straight. You became internationally famous and a millionaire four months ago. And this was just so stressful. You had to hop on a Lear and fly to St. Bart's. And you're complaining. About, it just that made me... I, I couldn't believe it. And does Noah Beck have a skill? No, he just has a, a photogenic face. Yeah. And a famous girl. Wait, wait, no, actually, he does have a skill. It's this, Bill. He goes like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There it is, dude. <laughs> yeah, he can do hey. He does the TikTok dances. You don't have to be good. In fact, being a good dancer in the male TikTok world, I don't think it, it helps you. You, you got to be kind of bad and awkward. You and have to that's just... How you, you have to it, you have to just date somebody else who's also like a big TikToker. That's where if you look up like any of these people on TikTok and you backtrack like where they got their fame from, it's just they were the boyfriend or girlfriend of someone else who was big on TikTok. You know what? Do you know you need to start a completely sincere TikTok? Yeah, dude, do it. Do the fuckboy shit on TikTok. Do the dances. Do all the trends. You, why not, Dino? Like, you could get so much pussy from this. Dude, like, it would take why? you thirty seconds a day. Thank you. Yeah, it would take you would be nothing. Talk about how you want to kill yourself every day. <laughs> Like you're suicidal. Like, hey man, I'm suicidal. Like, flip your little mind. Yeah. Like, oh, man, I don't do that. Spliced in with some dancing <laughs> to um, oh my God. like I can't, who's the pop fucking person now? I don't know. Fucking Doja Cat. Dude. There you go. Like dance to Doja, Doja Cat. And then like in the Exorcist, we had subliminal like images, like a subliminal image of your dick. Just like, like yes, there, like, oh, yeah. yes, that will get the 13 year old girls going. <laughs> they need that. Yeah, yeah, just just like fucking shake your ass to Billie Eilish. 30 seconds every day and then talk about body shaming and mental health the next day. Yeah. There it is, dude. Yeah. Come on, man. We're not going to yeah. talk shit about it. We'll, we'll and in if fact, you don't it'll have help mental us. health problems. We, we'll give you some. Exactly. We'll do everything we can to give you mental health problems. Can we talk? You have TikTok. Like can you just, just film a TikTok of him right now? Dude, like, I dude, got no, banned. I got banned from the platform because all the fatso started reporting oh, my account. Gosh. You want to yeah. film a TikTok right let's now? Let's do it. Dino. Come here. Get over here. Dino, come over here. Just will it play a song for him to dance to? Oh, yeah. Oh, this is great. We're doing a TikTok. Dino, why not? Like, all you have to do, we'll pay for it. We'll pay for your stylist. We'll just get you in the newest fuckboy threads. It's so easy, man. You have the look, and that's literally all that matters. All right. I don't even know how to use this shit. Okay, we, fight. we have to find a sound. We right? should find, like, what's the top song? Austin, can you pull up, like, the top Spotify songs this month? I know it changes. I wish we had. I know it's almost impossible to track I who's on top of the music fucking reception music. in this room. I apologize. The router is literally right there, and it's not helping. Huh? I think it's Peaches by Justin Bieber. Okay. Peaches by Justin what Bieber. What about, is there a more up-and-coming artist who's hit the top 100? Because Justin Bieber feels, I mean, that's like 2008. That's the era he came from. I want something that feels cutting edge. I don't know, maybe Dance Monkey by Tones and I? Sure. I don't know what either of those things are. It's called Dance Monkey. Okay, if we go to sounds, it'll give the like the top trending tones fucking... and I, tones and I, and the song is Dance Monkey. Is tones spelled with a Z or something? No, it's just tones. Like... Oh, I'm surprised. Bill's coming back. Okay, you're gonna dance to Dance Monkey by Tones and I. All right, Dino. You can do it, Dino. All no, right, no, so we're gonna add Leo, sound. I have to add the Leo, sound. Get, dance monkeys, right? Leo, get your bearded mug out of the frame. Oh, no, Leo, yeah, Leo, Leo knows this is gonna go viral, actually, yeah, and he's is. trying to coast off Dino's yeah, success. You're right. Look, you're really skinny, so use those limbs, man. Yeah, get yeah, those limbs it. out. I there. want you to loosen up, buddy. I want you to loosen up. I want you to be free in this room. All right. Think of this as like it's acting class. Yeah, sure. 
Oh my god. Is this Tones and I? Ready? Can That's you lip sync it too? You got it, you got it, Dino. You got it, Dino. All right, you got it? I'm going to add it. We should all just start sincerely singing. TikToking. I think so. Can we? Yeah, let's do it. Let's see what happens. Let's dude. see. And then yeah. w- once we get big on TikTok, <laughs> oh, then we man. can cause some mayhem. Yeah. It's just every one of you. you Everyone have, does we it. Have a, you have a homework assignment. You have to yes. do a sincere TikTok every day. All right, I'm doing it. <laughs> you know I'm down. <laughs> all right. Are you ready, Dino? It's, it's only 13 seconds. You got this. You ready? Okay. So as soon as I press this, you're going you're gonna to start dancing. Ready? Just be free, and, man. Yeah, really be free. <laughs> oh, Dino, you, dude, he murdered. I him. love it. You killed dude, it, Dino. Look at, look at this. It's gonna go so viral. Dino, can we make it? Can we have killed a screen it. shake effect kick in right when he when the course drops? Oh, dude, I, I don't know how to do. We need to. We shit. need to Let's augment. Effect, we need to augment that course. It'd only been better if you like fell on that. Uh, of the concrete and like broke your head but then he laughed about it afterwards so the audience <laughs> felt good about themselves oh my god this is hilarious it's got to have a happy ending if it's on tiktok yeah, well leo done. is working on doctoring that up mm-hmm. yeah i say we get to work on this it's just i never in history have more i mean we thought it was bad with the kardashians and with the hiltons I mean, if you thought kim kardashian yeah. was talentless look at noah fucking beck Oh yeah. So bad. I say yeah. we put money on it. Whoever can get the most TikTok followers in a certain amount of time like wins some kind of challenge. Okay, I got to see if they'll even let me back on the platform. You I got to figure back that out. a different name or email or anything like that. See, I'm planning on doing that. I've come back to Twitter. I got banned from Twitter too for something totally innocuous. I threatened my cameraman jokingly yeah. when I was in the same room with him. I was like, "I'm going to beat the shit out of you." Tweet and they banned me from the platform, supposedly forever, but I've come back and they haven't taken down my second account. A guy in our squad, though, in Lanigi, he is permanently banned from Twitter, and whenever he makes a new account, they take it down. So the, they do have perma bans, and the same thing may be in effect on uh, TikTok. Do you guys remember? You guys weren't really around yet, but in Lanigi, everybody in the fan base decided they hated this guy in our squad bill in right. Lanigi for a little bit because he was being sort of a bitch in a video in like 2018 <laughs> our the fan base does that sometimes they just crucify somebody for like a month and then they get over it yeah but um he was famous for just engaging these fans yeah. I'm gonna face fuck your little brother yeah. I'm gonna drag your little sister by her hair into a tool shed and rape her that kind of stuff and he just got I think he got banned from Instagram from yeah. Twitter and they aren't fucking around on Twitter so because I want to get in on this sincere TikTok challenge the race to the most followers within the Danny Mullen crew mm-hmm. uh, I hope I'm not banned permanently I got suspended rep- responding to one of the fat chicks cause she was like it's live Oh yeah, nice. It's li- uh, I'll edit that in. Life. I'll edit that in. <laughs> Beautiful. You guys suspended right. on which platform? On Instagram. Okay. Until what I logged in on my computer and deleted it manually. The girl was like, "Your parents must be so pissed with what you're doing with your life, or something with it like that." And I said, "Your parents must be so pissed that you're eating all their fucking food." Yeah. <laughs> and That's she- not even. You're not even using the f word there. You're yeah. just referring to eating habits. I know, and I got, I got, I couldn't log into my Instagram on my phone, and then I tried to log in on my computer, and it made me like delete that post or whatever. And, and who, who's to say that <sighs> hers was any better than yours? Isn't that crazy? Like, yeah, I mean, and yours was, I mean, enough subtext was required that I'm surprised the algorithm was able to detect quote unquote hate speech. Well, they probably detected how fat she was. Do you think it had facial recognition technology? And then it was like, oh, okay, this it, is offensively targeting this fat person. Well, she also reported you, I'm sure. You know what I mean? And also, you can career shame someone. You can say, like, you're a loser. You haven't done shit. Your videos are stupid. Your yeah. fucking movies are dumb. Nothing you've done is worthwhile. Mm-hmm. Blah, blah, blah. You haven't made it. Blah, blah. And you go, shut up. You're fat. You're, you're banned. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and, that is kind of funny. And the fat thing, Bill, you were talking about how fat isn't always a choice. But if you have the brain power to get offended when somebody calls you fat, don't you at that point have enough brain power to lose weight? I understand <laughs> getting to that point might not have been a conscious decision. Yeah. But once you start feeling bad 
because people are poking fun at you or you're not able to access the same mates that you used to be able to access. At that point, I mean, it's, it's on you to hit 24-hour yeah, fitness. Or also get to the point where, like, you just don't care if people call you fat. Right. Like, accept your fat lot in life. Right. And it's move on. It's weird. They'll sit in these, like, self-loathing circles where they all show each other things they hate. Like, they kept saying, Danny's video made me cry or whatever. Self-loathing like, circles? You mean their body? <laughs> That's pretty good. That's good. <laughs> But it's they, more they of a were sphere. like, Danny made me cry, blah, blah, blah. But really, it was the fucking chick who posted it on TikTok to all of you other fat chicks who like to watch things that make you upset on yeah. purpose. When this was a podcast seven months ago that you would have never seen otherwise. Yeah. yeah, it's it's everybody has that tendency, though, too. I mean, we were talking about this before the show started, how bad of an idea it is to go read, for instance, the Danny Mullen Reddit or for anybody <laughs> who's yeah. in the comedy business in particular it's one thing, if, I mean, the D'Amelios, that's another theme of their show, is that people talk shit about them and to them constantly. Yeah. But, I mean, if they looked at, if they had a subreddit anywhere close to what the Danny Mullen regime subreddit is, I'm sure they would already be dead from suicide. Like, yeah. a, a girl model chick doesn't even know what hate is. I mean, the comedians get it the worst. Oh, yeah. I remember Chris D'Elia. I used to look at Chris D'Elia's comments, and ton before was, the cancellation, people yeah. hated on him all the time. Yeah, he would he would engage with them too. That's uh, he he was pretty good about it in the comments. He would fucking go after them. I'm saying it feels it's irresistible to go check in on what people are saying about yeah. you, but it's not a good idea. And if you're a fat chick, you shouldn't go seeking out the enemies of fat women because it's all it's going to do is make them feel awful, or maybe it'll motivate them. I don't know. It would be a, a shame. lot of it. They're also they like do it for views on TikTok. They try to find the viral outrage. Like, a lot of them aren't even mad. They're just pretending to be mad so they can get other fat chicks to watch their TikTok. Hmm. That's true, actually. Yeah, it's weird true. how there's this whole attitude everybody has nowadays of pretending that they're angry or being angry on the behalf of other people of who course, really yeah. don't give a fuck. And it's just like, why... Stop being fucking retarded, dude. I know a chick, dude. I know a chick. She used <laughs> if to... only Mark Zuckerberg could issue a statement like that. Hey, guys. <laughs> just, being fucking retarded. He'll solve everything. <laughs> I know a fucking chick. She used to work at Universal. She used to... Every time somebody goes getting canceled for some sexual assault, sexual misconduct, she would say that that person... She had an experience with that person. No. I swear to God. Just completely uh, lie? Lie. Just a piece of yeah. shit, dude. I, I obviously have not followed her. But yeah, just make up something on Twitter. Well, and that's, put it up. And that's what the people who were, were doing that came after us. I yeah. mean, Bill Dawes, every, anybody who associated with me in any way was a rapist, a mm -hmm. sexist, <laughs> yeah. a, um, a, a racist. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's nuts, man, what's going on up there. By the yeah, way, but it's also, Bill... It's also just... It just means when you want to say shit, you just kind of like sneak it in there. And better, you know what I mean? Yeah. Make the same commentary, but just sneak it in there in more subtle ways. That's right. You can still make fun of fat girls. Yeah. Use different words mm -hmm. like corpusculin or whatever the fucking like there's other words you can use that will like uh, evade an algorithm, I think. You know what I mean? Absolutely. The corpusculin. <laughs> I don't Colossal know. women. Bill, I saw you got your your fucking black belt jujitsu. No, no, I'm still brown belt. Yeah. Oh, you're still brown belt. I didn't yeah. even know you were. I thought you were a blue belt. Probably when I first met you, I might have been. Yeah. Let's it's talk about. Let's talk a little bit about jujitsu, yeah, dude. dude. You okay, guys, I always wanted you guys. But I will. Yeah, dude, yeah I, 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 I'm going to be a brown belt for the rest of my fucking life. I don't think I'll ever be. A when brown did you get your brown? I got my brown belt um, right before COVID. Yeah. Okay. And, and then I just haven't really been training that much, and you know, you fucking get the injuries, and then when you're when you're a brown belt, like this is what it is. When you're a black belt at an academy, they're like, he's one of our black belts. But for me, I was like, oh, he's one of our brown belt. You know what I mean? I can mm. still be kind of a, a fuck up who shows up late mm -hmm. yeah. and still high sometimes and mm -hmm. hungover, wherever the hell it is. And mm -hmm. I'm still like a brown belt. But as a black belt, you got to really represent mm -hmm. the dojo. And I think I think the guy who belted me isn't going to let me. He's not going to let you get a black belt. Yeah, let's, yeah, I'm not around enough, you know. Let's talk about this. It's interesting, the belt breakdown. I'm trying to help everyday people understand this. My theory is that if you've been training jujitsu dedicatedly for about eight months, you could probably take out 80% of the male population in a fight. 80% when you're a three-stripe white belt. You agree with that? Well, the, I mean, what, what are, we are we talking about? Like on a mat? On a or, soccer field. On a soccer Full field. Full contact fight, but you found a favorable service. I think, that, you know, I think you know that's what? fair. Maybe, a favorable service. Maybe, maybe right. it's a parking lot, but there are no cars around. It's empty, and his buddies aren't going to rush out of the pool hall with yeah. steel toe boots and kick you in the back of the head. It's one-on-one, right. -on -one, no time limit in an open space. But so so then you're talking about like grappling will just be stand-up, but at the same time, like, then you have eye gouging and all sorts of dirty shit kicking in the balls. I mean, if, yeah, I mean, but I mean, if you were a 
three-stripe white belt, you might get eye gouged, but then you're quickly going to swing for an arm bar when he's got that those fingers and that arm extended reaching yeah, yeah. for your face. Yeah, I think that's kind of true. I think that most people will not be able to take down, at least if you're a blue belt, I think you can definitely take down 8% of the population. I mean, and keep in mind, 80%, I mean, the 80th percentile of income is probably like 20 grand a year. So yeah. the 80th percentile in this country, unfortunately, isn't very much anymore. <laughs> the 80th percentile of good fighters is probably like Austin. Yeah. Dino is the 75th percentile. Um, and then I think once you get to you're a solid blue belt, that figure jumps up to like 90 something percent. Purple belt, virtually everybody you come across, unless he's like the size of an NFL lineman yeah. or he's got his own combat Who's experience. Who's had no training, exactly. Yeah. Yes. I mean, even if I took on a guy who weighed 300 pounds, if you just gave me time, I would beat him yeah. in a no time limit fight. It might, I might have my back uh, completely raw and bleeding after the bout, and my, maybe I get a broken arm or my ankle's fucked up. He's going to get choked out, though, eventually. Yeah. Brown belt is, um, br I mean, brown belt, basically, there's no difference between black and brown in practical terms. Mm -hmm. That's when I you think. can start a dojo, right? You can you can run. Yeah, it. even I lower mean, purple, yeah, you can yeah, do okay. it. Dep depends where you are, what state, what country. And places like LA, they have so many black belts. Someone's going to be a brown belt starting a dojo. But if I went to Sweden, I could probably start one as a purple belt. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So yeah, I definitely feel like yeah, brown belts and, and black belts they always compete against each other at any dojo, right? Yeah. So it's like the, just the black belts will dominate, but they're not going to just be submitting the brown belts constantly. You know, what I mean? it's hard for a, a black belt to submit. Me. What's yeah. the allure of of an intelligent man being involved with jujitsu? It seems to be a correlation. There's a lot of a lot of the, these big time celebrities who are very either into meditation, they're into fucking taking care of themselves. A lot of them happen to be in jujitsu too. What is yeah. what is it about jujitsu? Well, it's just like kinesthetic awareness. Like how, like you have energy coming this way. What can you do? There's there's so many options and permutations. It's like they it's mm -hmm. like what they say. It's kinetic chess. Is a term for kinetic it. Kinetic chess. That's, that's cool. That's Leo is thinking. I'm never going to do this bullshit. Kin <laughs> kinetic fucking. I can't <laughs> no, I, find I, 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 have said, I will. I will have to delve <laughs> into give, it eventually. Give, give him some fucking juiciness here, Bill. It's awesome because it, you're learning how to beat the shit out of people, but it's the safest way to learn how to beat the shit out of people. Yeah. No head trauma. Exactly. You learn how to sub, it's not even be. It's like you learn how to submit people. Mm -hmm. Like we, when someone is really big and you can just restrain them in a way right. where they can't. It's That's amazing. Really hum you can humiliate people. Yeah. Easy. And the great thing is I, I, I was first spelled to Henzo Grace in New York, and that was like all cops and firefighters coming in off the streets. You know what I mean? Mm. Big fucking dudes from New York and Jersey mm. just fucking ready mm. to fucking go. And I was a blue belt and beating and like submitting them, tapping them out. And they were so confused because they were like, I should be able to kick your ass. I'm like, well, that's how you know it fucking works. Right. So for someone like you, you already got the size and mm. the athleticism. Mm. It'd be great. You know what I mean? And a lot of people smoke weed and they mm -hmm. roll and become mm -hmm. meditative. You just kind of like, yeah. you know, I think it's incredible, man. I mean, it's, it changed my life. How a few things changed my life. Do you smoke weed and roll sometimes? I have. That's like the 10th. This is like the 10th planet. Sure. That's like the 10th planet thing. I've uh -huh. literally like went to roll 10th planet. 10th like, planet is a school that was founded by Eddie Bravo, who's yeah, a, yeah. a famous stoner jujitsu. And Joe Rogan is probably one of the most famous black belts, right? Wow. So, but I went to roll with a guy at 10th planet. He goes, hold on, man. He went out the parking lot and just fucking starts Open weed. Yeah. And he came. I mean, it's part of the philosophy. Yeah, I think it's really hard to roll stoned. Mm. But I'll say what I think is so cool about jujitsu is I heard um, uh, the general manager for the San Francisco 49ers. I forget his name. He's an ex linebacker. He said that football is the best metaphor for life. I think jujitsu is a really good metaphor for life, too. Meaning that the lessons you learn in jujitsu are absolutely applicable to your everyday life. Yeah. When I first started out, I would go compete in every tournament. I would get choked out or submitted somehow my very first match and have to drive all the way home from Santa Cruz a fucking loser. So to overcome that, I learned that I had to work really hard, mm -hmm. A, in the, in the gym, but also that I had to change my mindset and start believing in myself because I would hobble out onto the mat with my shoulders hunched, big eyes, yeah. terrified of my opponent. And what my fears were that I was going to lose really quickly ended up becoming manifest and I would get choked out right away. Mm -hmm. I learned that you have to step onto the mat with confidence and believe you're going to win. The same is true in life. Also, the hard work you put in the gym, you see those results very clearly in jiu-jitsu. It's a little bit harder in business, for instance, to see the correlation between hard work and the scoreboard, which is your bank account. Yeah. There's, a, there's a delay. Sometimes you could be doing really good work. Maybe you're an artist, but nobody's paying for your work until after you're dead. Jiu-jitsu, it's very clear. 
You put in the time, you start catching people who you used to not catch in submission <clears throat> holds. Yeah. You learn lessons in resilience. A guy's got you mounted. He's got the cross choke sunk in deep, but you just got a centimeter of windpipe left to hold on. You hold on, you hold on. You bridge escape. You're back on top. The next day, when something goes wrong, one of your employees quits. Maybe, you, maybe you're a little less willing to throw in the towel and just fucking start drinking and, and go drown your sorrows that day from depression. Yeah, I see. It's also like a good distinction between uh, like humbleness and being like humiliated, right? Mm -hmm. Because when you first start getting choked out and submitted, you're like, oh my God, it's humiliating. And then you realize like, no, this, it's actually good. It's good to be humbled. It's good to be, it's good to have someone that will constantly school you and make you feel like shit. Because before I was a jujitsu guy, I was a yoga guy, which isn't gay, Dino. I was like a <laughs> yoga instructor, right? <laughs> and, and I was and like, yoga, whatever they want to say about it, it's non judgmental. It's the most arrogant, smug fucking, as a teacher, one of yeah. the most smug things you can ever do in your fucking life because you start to feel like you are literally better than all the peasants who don't do yoga. Right. And there's nothing to humiliate you. There's nothing to humble you. Yeah. Because you just have adoring girls at your fucking class who are like, everyone deep breath in, you know, and yeah. you fuck a couple of them maybe. But right. <laughs> you do jujitsu, it's all dudes, yeah. right. hairy fucking scarred dudes, yeah. these fucking Brazilians, and someone at that gym will make you feel like garbage. Right. Yeah either aggressively or subtly, but it'll right. definitely happen no matter how good you are. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, yeah that, I think my, my dad used to say that about the boxing gym, like that everybody gets their ass kicked at a certain time and that's what keeps you humble. I guess, yeah, it's the same experience at a jiu-jitsu gym. That's cool, man. Yeah, you learn to deal with enemies. Like, there are dudes at your gym who you just don't like, mm -hmm. and you have to learn how to control your emotions in dealing with people you don't like because you're rolling with them God, a lot. that's yeah. a great skill, man. And I think I did develop that playing it on baseball teams through college, obviously, but... I mean, and, and fucking, it's t in jiu-jitsu, it's like you're fighting the guy. Right, that's even worse. So if he right. chokes you, like, I mean, it's not uh, like the guy sucks, had a better yeah. fucking RBI yeah. average than yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then usually if the RBI. person has a lot of attitude in the dojo, usually right. they get weed it out gotcha because that type of like mentality won't last long right. i have a one funny uh jujitsu story is i was at henzo's and i was like a maybe like a two three stripe blue belt i was i was feeling myself a little bit mm -hmm. i was at john don Hare's class mm -hmm. if you guys ever want to learn about the philosophy of jujitsu don john don Hare's yeah he's been on rogan a bunch of times he's gordon ryan's coach gordon ryan's considered the best pound for pound no gi grappler Wow. At the ever wow. yeah, yeah he's a famous jiu-jitsu coach yeah. so i was going i was doing some like black belts and i was able to not get submitted and a couple times maybe i did but i was feeling kind of strong there was this like this like middle eastern guy who was there and he was just kind of like hanging out he had like a white belt and i was like hey you want to roll and he's like okay so usually you do the slap of the hands you fist bump to mm -hmm. start the thing he doesn't do it I'm like, okay etiquette breach we start rolling yeah i'm rolling he's kind of a spaz right he's really i, I have it like a choke in he's not he's not tapping he's not tapping he's not tapping finally he's like <laughs> and then he taps what the fuck i'm like hey man you might you know, tap early it's okay it's cool i'm like you know all right let's go again hand out nothing this motherfucker he's not even looking at me he's just like looking up to the side like this piece of shit but then he spazzes right so i'm like this guy's and then i'm thinking like Maybe it's like race shit. He's like this fucking white guy, and I'm whatever it is. We start going, so I tap him like three more times. And he's always a spaz. He's not saying good submission, not saying anything, whatever. And I'm like, all right, dude, cool, yeah, good roll. I'm like, what a fucking asshole. I walk into the locker room. I'm changing. Guy comes in. He has a stick, and I'm like, is this guy like wielding a stick at me? He starts tapping the floor. He was blind. I had no idea he was fucking blind. Oh like, god, I rolled with him. Yeah, and I was like, I'm <laughs> such a fucking asshole. Or I am thinking like he has, his, he couldn't see me. Yeah. Oh my God. But that guy is a fucking stud. That's yeah, that the guy is who's amazing, like man. fighting with like literally couldn't see. He had a fucking walking stick. He was like at the lockers, like feeling Holy shit. shit. Yeah. Well, that's incredible, man. Yeah. That's, that happens to me all the time. Like when I, <laughs> not, not that I fucking roll with blind people, uh -huh. but just whatever you fucking, um, you lose your shit because the guy in front of you in traffic doesn't go when the light turns That's green. You happens, honk at him. Yeah. But then two lights ahead, you check your fucking text That's and you do you. the same thing to a guy behind you. <laughs> of course. We're all hypocrites. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. That's so true in traffic. But I think the universal law here is that the blind should stay off the jiu-jitsu <laughs> match. It, cause, it causes issues. They don't do the fist bump before it. Yeah, yeah. Actually, what a great martial art for blind people. Jiu-jitsu? It's yeah. really perfect. I mean, wow. the amount of... like. You could roll almost just as well completely blind as you could with sight. Yeah, because when you get really good, that's the thing you start. You close your eyes and you start rolling, which is like a, it's almost like doing it with stone, right? You just kind of close your eyes and just 
use the force. Yeah, the fuck it is, that's you cool, know what man. I mean? yeah. yeah, boxing or kickboxing, no way. But jujitsu, I mean, you can you can feel where the guy's four limbs are. Yeah, and once you get in tight with them, you can assess those limbs and start passing. Have you still or been training, Danny? Yeah. Oh, you are? Where yeah. are you training? Uh, I don't want to say. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like, hey, man, I feel like what you said in the podcast about my fat girlfriend. Right, yeah, dude. Yeah, absolutely. I don't want that. But it's it's a good gym. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but, uh, yeah, man, fuck So yeah. you going for your brown, too? Yeah. Are you testing soon? Dude, I'm. Uh, there's no test, but... One day he just comes and throws a belt at you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The problem is, me. I've gone to so many different gyms that I yeah, you, you start... Like, every time I go to a new gym, which has been, like, twice now, I've peeled two stripes off my purple belt. Yeah. So I've gone back to day one, and then it takes like six months to get your first stripe on your purple. Yeah, exactly. But uh, I'm, I'd am i say my level is about two or three stripe purple belt at a really legit gym. Yeah. Like I, I already, after like, a, like I had a layoff period of about three years, was already like tapping 90% of the purples at the gym yeah. and like rolling well with the browns. Yeah. And you obviously like inverted guard because you like your asshole gang legs, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so do you do yeah. inverted guard? I actually start in donkey guard, if you know what that is. Of course. Yeah. So it was it Jeff, Jeff, Jeff Glover, Glover donkey that? guard? Uh, yeah, he did. No, I, uh, being 31, my body is a little bit more brittle than it was when I was like 18 or 19, yeah. as much as I thought it wouldn't be. Yeah. And mostly I'm totally fine, but I do play more traditional guards now. So yeah, I don't invert, which people might not know what inverted guard is. Just if Dino saw two guys rolling and one of them was doing <laughs> inverted guard, he would leave the building. Yeah. Just, just know that. <laughs> it's Now, uh, how often do you leave in the gym like... You know your joints sore, like bad. bad oh, right now bad, I, I, I just came here from jujitsu. That's oh, okay. that's why I got here a little late. Yeah, and my fucking arm is like this. The, the joints in your elbow are sore all the fucking time. What about your no neck? Idea. Huh? My neck always is fucked up. I have like weird country boy neck shit. So it's just like my neck is like impervious. Yeah, your neck nice. looks. That's like the sturdy. one. That's my one saving grace. Yeah, is nice. like I I end up in turtle a lot because I'm not that agile and I'm fucking old. Mm. Turtles when you roll to your knees once the guy's past your guard with it, your ass in the air, Dino, you'd love it. It's basically it's the it's the turtle <laughs> position. It's a fetal position, but you're on your knees and elbows. Okay, that's yeah. what turtle is. So everyone's trying you know go so my and I can just kind of like fucking make my neck. Nice. I have like a weird like Irish country boy neck, but uh, so people can't really get me there. But I'm telling you, man, like my, the joints here, the lower back, uh, yeah, I don't know. Bas basically, my fucking elbows. Yeah, it's a problem because the minute you like you do armbar drills for like an hour, mm -hmm. it's it's gonna start fucking your shit up. You know what I mean? For for me, it's a neck. I had to get a Tempur Pedic pillow. I have to neck warm up all the time because yeah, people are just yanking on your collar all the time, yeah, yeah. or you're putting your head basically in their crotch in order to pass the guard <laughs> and they're shoving your head away or they're trying to choke it. Yeah. Like people are using your head are you like doing a piece no of sporting gi? Gi. gi. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so it, no heel hooks and shit like that. Yeah. Yeah. But uh gi, I mean, gi, you'd think it's easier on your neck, but people are still grabbing the collar all the time, which still the yanking motion. Yeah. Everyone has their one thing. That's a fucking issue too. And I got, that's why I don't do really no gi. Cause no gi, no gi is without all the karate about komodo. Nowadays it's all about going after the fucking legs. I think it's boring. I'm just not into it. Yeah, they just, and when you look at the nogi classes, I'm not going to name like gyms, Tenth Planet, but like the guys, <laughs> they wear, they all have this weird like male yogi body. Yeah. Have you ever noticed this? Like these vegans, like a male vegan, oh. like they're kind of skinny fat. Yeah, they're skinny. Like fat. all of them are skinny fat. They have like skinny legs, uh -huh. and they have these weird like, like shapes going on around here. Yeah. They have muscles because they train, oh, yeah. but right. there's nothing to indicate that there's any discipline there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But there's still like high level no gi 10th planet guys. It's yeah. very bizarre. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, maybe this, I mean, we are just getting so into the jujitsu weeds here. We might have, <laughs> we might have lost a lot of the listenership, but. Sorry. But we did talk about asshole licking in jujitsu. We started so. off, we, we, <laughs> yeah. we brought so the good. kids in with the asshole licking and now we're trying to I turn. I will say this relating to sex too. Like it, it does feel when you first start Dino and you should definitely do it. Any young kid should do it. Uh, it feels a little gay because you're on the when you start you're on your knees and a man's legs are wrapped around your back mm -hmm. or vice versa. That's mm -hmm. like how you start, mm -hmm. and then you look each other in the eyes <laughs> and you fucking begin eating each other's ass. So once <laughs> so once you get over that, which happens right away, because then you're actually just fighting for your life, really. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, in your mm -hmm. mind, that's what you're doing. I never think about sex, obviously, in jiu-jitsu. But let me tell you something. During sex, I think about jiu-jitsu mm. all the fucking time. I'm like, I'm passing this mm -hmm. bitch's guard. You're, we're north-south position. You're wishing the girl you're fucking was one of your training partners. 
Yeah, yeah. You're like, I got her side control. Yeah. Uh oh, here I got a half guard. Oh, but I wish down. I wish this was Ted. I wish this was. <laughs> um, and you know how to choke a girl out during sex? Well, not choke her out, but yeah. choke her during. Sex I put my gi. I put my gi on Mia recently and just fucking cross collar choked her from <laughs> missionary while I was banging her. Are you serious? No. She loved it. Yeah, that's really. Hot. She loved it. You didn't choke her out though. Did no, you I didn't choke bitch. her out. See, we know how to do right up to the edge. Yeah, just right uh, there are times when chicks and chicks who come into jujitsu usually they're they're freaks. Like if a girl is willing to come into a gym yeah, where all it, guys, it's I mean ninety nine percent guys. There will be like two or three girls in every class that I go to because it's a pretty it's a, a bigger gym. But um, there is a chick who just I guess came from like Russia and nobody knew who she was. She's a student in the area and she just showed up, happened to be a blue belt, and she's pretty cute. And you can tell this girl is just fishing for dick mm. and uh i was talking like one of the brown belts was telling me that like a couple of the brown belts were out getting drinks and she somehow like found out where they were going from one of the chicks who trains there like showed up and was like trying to go home with the guys and shit but basically leo if you were at the gym this girl would have already seen the inside of your bedroom wow. and she i mean have you seen the inside of leo's bedroom no, I'm see. just, I'm just, I'm imagining it's a thirst trap of bedrooms. Uh, no, no a no. thirst trap implies oh, it's a mess. You, it's a fucking mess. It, but the girl from Russia is probably used genius. to it. It's, it, <laughs> it, it, it looks like a, probably how a bedroom in Stalingrad would have looked <laughs> in the mid 1940s. Yeah, like I'm moving out soon. No, no, I got to You're moving I out, Queen. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, the lease is up soon. So you, and, is you and Jacob, you. you and your roommate are not going to be roommates anymore. I don't. Probably not. No. Oh, are you going to talk to him anymore? I just think, you know, it's time for me to live on my own. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. we're good. I mean, we're good. We're fine. Oh, where are you going to move to? Probably stay around here, bud. Okay. Where do, where, the I'm not going to try to dox you I'll here, but like what kind, of a, what kind of apartment are you looking at? Like a, a good one. A one bedroom you can get. It's it's a pretty good deal right now in uh, West Hollywood. What are the prices for a one bedroom in West Hollywood, Raph? Uh, about one, uh, 1400 to 1900 that's pretty freaking it's good, man. Yeah. Luckily, all those people died from COVID, so the housing market is a little open. Mm. Right? Yeah, yeah. And Thank then the, God even, for that. Yeah, exactly. No, th there's some good deals all over the place still, so it shouldn't be too hard. To find something. Okay, it's been a year since you were there. Yeah, man. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah, he um his roommate is doing a rea well, was doing a reality show at some shitty TikTok house. So uh, he started moving a out. TikTok and, reality show. Uh, yeah, he was doing it. Yeah. Was but, it on YouTube roommate. or was it on the TV? Yeah, it was on YouTube. But I, uh, I I fucked with it for a video. Don't worry, Bill. I stuck <laughs> it. But yeah, Leo's room is basically like a mattress on the floor and a bunch of Walmart. Like I, got, I was not I got expecting it raised that, up. Leo. I got it raised up off the ground. You know he, I mean? That was a new development. But it's like yeah. just a bunch of those Walmart like plastic bins that you put up. Yeah. Basically, that you put Christmas decorations in and then stow in the attic. Yeah. Those are his shelves and that's his closet space. <laughs> I did that. That was temporary. But yeah, See, I mean, that's how much pussy Leo gets that like he does doesn't have to do like I had to make my little fucking shitty apartment like into right. this like virgin virgin Atlantic like first class suite. It looks cool, yours is man. nice, yeah. To Damn. make people think that it was like that maybe I wasn't as poor as I actually am. Mm -hmm. But if you could just have a mattress on the floor and yeah. shit, are, everywhere, are you actually poor? Or are you just guy. being self deprecating? I used to no, be rich. He, I used to be rich, but I, I lost. I, it's a long story. I, I, you, it's it's a crazy story. I had a lawyer take half a million dollars. You, you told me about the lawsuit, yeah. but um, I mean, you still have residuals coming in from old shows. Like, I mean, do you have a nest egg saved up? Or are you? <sighs> no. Yeah, residuals come, but not like it used to be, man. Residuals used to be incredible, but they, they've changed the the paradigm now because of streaming. Now you get like I just did SWAT, which SWAT would pay. Mm -hmm. I think it's like 9500 the first run. Mm -hmm. The second run, they would pay 9500 mm -hmm. wow. Third run, 45 Fourth run, 45 and then mm -hmm. goes half from there. That's so great. that's like, you get make 30000 a year on one fucking guest star. Mm -hmm. Now it's whatever. So you get the first, and then they hand you a couple pennies. Yeah, bro. Really stuff. So, uh, Bill, I, I, we heard about the Airbnb story. That was what was tied to the lawyer yeah, taking yeah, you yeah. for. So, yeah, Bill, just, just one of those fucking... This goddamn country of ours, there are so many ways you can get sued from so many angles. And even if they have no right to sue you and you're right, you still might end up paying 200 grand in attorney's fees to yep. defend yourself. It's just a really shitty part about this country. And that's why people need to save much more money than they think they're actually going to need. You never know when that's going to happen. But you also had a, of a daughter. Was that a big thing that ate away your savings? Was that a problem too? Yeah, I mean, me me and the baby mama never went to court mm -hmm. because she knew if we went to court, she would lose custody because she's a baby, baby, baby crazy. Mm -hmm. I mean, but literally not like, mm. my bitch is crazy. She is like, she lives in her car now. Like, she's mentally ill. Yeah. So that's why she never, because she knew she'd been diagnosed with different issues. Um, 
but I would pay money along the way every time. And, and as an actor, it's one of those things like you get, like I'm on Broadway and I'm doing like guest stars. I'm on a soap opera. I'm like, oh, I'm just, I'm just wealthy now. Mm. So you give your daughter like $5,000 yeah. in savings and all of a sudden that job goes away yeah. and there's nothing. It's, it's the most feast and famine position you can ever have. Yeah. Anything yeah. else, there's some sort of like, if, even if you're a dancer, which is a shitty fucking career, Usually you're on a, in a company. And you get your, your weekly SAG salary. Your pension, though, your SAG pension might be decent, though, one day, right? I don't think so. I was never one of those guys who took out the fucking pension. I was always oh, like, give okay. me the fucking money now. Right, right, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so hopefully this will, hopefully you guys can contribute to my Patreon. I'm just kidding. I have a Patreon. <laughs> yeah. Do you guys invest in stuff? Do you invest in, like, yeah. Dogecoin and fucking nah, talk to these douchebags about that stuff. <laughs> no, they're it's, not in crypto. You guys aren't in crypto. Yeah, I, do, it, I mean, I might have some if I had money, but it's it's all I'm these very kids. Little in crypto. The Generation Z, all they care about, Bill, is like whatever the new trendy thing to invest in is. Yeah. So NFTs and crypto. What is an NFT? I see. This is something that I've explained at length in a video. This shirt, actually, we did. We did a prank where we went into TikTok houses and I was selling fake NFTs. NFTs are pretty much just a picture. So usually they belong to a series. Like there's one that's really famous right now called CryptoPunks. A company called Larva Labs in 2017 randomly generated, I think, 10,000 images of little characters. They look like Nintendo graphics, original Nintendo graphics. Yeah. But one's got a beanie and one's got a pipe and one has big earrings. And there's a, a limited supply of them and they were free. But now they keep getting resold for higher and higher prices like Pokemon cards. Yeah. But the value on some of them is literally like one, I think, sold for like $11 million. Mm -hmm. And now the floor, the cheapest crypto punk of these 10,000 is like 350 grand. And it's just based on scarcity. Now, it's nuts, those, it's just, it's purely scarcity. But there are legitimate artists out there who are now releasing their official paintings digitally. And the idea is you buy that digital painting. It's like you bought the real Picasso yeah. at, at, at an auction versus just ordering one off art.com. And it's encrypted. Yeah. It's encrypted with uh, so, with a crypto. It, it's, it's, it's with like the Ethereum blockchain. So the blockchain. Like yeah, it's it's provable. You can prove that right. yours is the original. And yeah. that's the it's so fine art is moved digital is the idea. Mm -hmm. But the problem is we don't know a lot of it isn't fine art. It was randomly generated by a computer and just scarcity is the only thing propping it up. Crazy. So I went in as this fake crypto guy and I was just selling pictures of this is Stalin fucking an alien with Vladimir <laughs> Lenin. And I was like trying to sell these like 18 year old kids on. They're like, fuck, man, it's a pretty good fucking deal, man. I got. I got a couple sup ducks right now, and I, I got some me bits I got to unload. Those are my other NFTs, but I'll get back to you. Like, they were taking it seriously. And did they buy? Uh, no, nobody bought. I, I couldn't keep my act and together. what does well. NFT stand for? You know? Non-fungible tokens, which means, do you know fungible? There's a vocab word for it. You hit us with that big one for fat non girls. Non-fungible, like, non, like, cash redeemable? What does uh, it mean? I think it means not, like, not, uh, I, don't, I don't even know. Look up fungible. I think it means, uh, like, non-fakeable or non, like, uh, reproducible like it's it's the legitimate um, anointed official token. So what are people? I mean, I guess it's like any higher art. But what are people getting when they buy an NFT? They get to sh do they show it on their phone? It goes exactly. look what I got guys. Right. Yeah. Got this thing they put it on their phone. Instagram, like as their Instagram fucking profile. But stuff that seems like, that. like very like low social class yeah. standing. Like there's no one who's going to be like. Like what are they? What type of status? Just Instagram status? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just social but, media uh, but, bullshit. Man. But I mean, it. You can laugh at it all you want, but some of these guys, like um, Nelk's female clothing designer, he's a guy named Tori, who I've gone to dinner with before. I met him. He posts about his sup ducks and his bored apes. His NFTs. I think he bought one for like eighteen grand, and I was like, holy fuck, dude, eighteen grand? That's way too much. He bought it for that in late July. I think the floor on those now is like a hundred and six grand. So he wow. can resell it for that. And yeah. he's and he's going to yeah. make like the easiest $150,000 ever. So yeah. It's almost like a, a different form of cryptocurrency, right? Yes. Form that, that's essentially what it is, yeah. And just the risk is like what happens when this bubble pops? Some of them are going to be valuable long term and it'll just be like the stock market. They'll like they'll be dips and then they'll yeah. go back up. But some of them are just never going to go back up. Mm -hmm. And some kids are putting like huge chunks of their net worth into these is the scary thing. Yeah, it's some people are going to lose a lot of money. Yeah. Fungible, by the way, just means something that can be replaced. So if it's non-fungible, it means it can't, can't be, be replicated. There we go. Can't be replicated. Yeah, and that's that's one of the arguments is people are like, why would I pay for this when I can uh, right-click and screenshot it and then just make it my background on the computer? Do you yeah. have investments? No. None? No, I have none. You... During, during COVID, everyone's like, you got to do this, this, this. 
I just did fucking pull the trigger, man. And everyone who told me was right. Like they said, invest in like uh, like uh, travel and hotels. Right, at the height of Delta, uh, height of the the COVID. Virus yeah, yeah, they would have. They all all went up. All it, it took a while, away. but they all went back up. Yeah, there was a lot of things like that. My but. fantasy, and I've I've told a lot of people in our organization about this. My fantasy is to have Bill Dawes as a writer. Mm. And uh, be able to right now we just um, we bumped Nico's pay and I bumped Ian's pay too so payroll is pretty big right now and it's like <laughs> already like oh, okay how am I gonna fucking pay these guys but uh, yeah having Bill Dawes as a writer would be I mean, sick. It'd be incredible yeah. right for what oh for sketches yeah, yeah well for everything we do yeah hey man I'm I'm down I'm down to work mm-hmm. I know you are man you seen where I live I'm fucking down to work he's right there man <laughs> yeah we you're still performing I mean how many days a week are you doing stand up. I've never been crazy about it, but like I'm doing like uh, I have a show Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, you know, so mm-hmm. like usually four times a week, four or five. Nice. Yeah. Man. Yeah. Bill Dawes, he was a big part of our uh, I Suck at Comedy video. Mm-hmm. This guy gave me great notes on my uh, my Chinese refrigerator girl bit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's the only one I can remember from that video, but yeah, you were super fucking helpful for that. And uh, with What that, are you guys doing a show? What are you doing a show again? Well, we just tried to do one, but the Fatso's canceled it. Yeah, they they won't cancel if we do it How again. How do they cancel it? They got that much pull. They fourth, got fourth, fourth wall, wall pushed out. Uh, they got fourth. They called fourth wall and they wrote him and they, wow. he canceled. And then uh, they there was this other venue, forgetting the name of it. They got he got contacted by the Sun. Like we got an article written about it from the yeah. Sun. Yeah. Now has I've, it has it hurt your viewership or your Patreon or has no. only helped it? It's only helped. Helped. Absolutely helped. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. It's like being canceled is the new, like, That's the success. bump you need. Yeah. yeah. It's if like you, a yeah. mark of, it's like a badge of honor. Like, oh, this person is, like, part of the, uh, like, if you're getting canceled for saying, like, offensive comedy or whatever. Yeah. Then, yeah. then it's just like, of, okay, this guy doesn't give a fuck. I'll watch it. Because shit. now you're part of counterculture. And that was part of the thing. Like, the liberal movement used to be the counterculture back yeah, in the exactly. day. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. And now the canceled people are the new counterculture. It, it's insane, that. right? Yeah. Like, these fucking, like, my girlfriend and I were, we saw, like, some fat 60-year-old lady walking her dog down the street. And she had purple hair. <laughs> and my girlfriend and I were just like, we know this lady went to CVS and was just so proud of herself when she put that dye in her hair. <laughs> <laughs> blow dried it off and was like ah, now I'm a real rebel and you know she put it up on Facebook yeah. and I was like you, you're not a rebel when the CEO of Amazon and Coca-Cola agree with you yeah exactly okay like having the BLM card link in your Instagram bio yes. is not rebellious because Netflix and Hulu have the black stories tab on their fucking on their shit now isn't it crazy now like now the liberals are towing the government line yes it was always the fucking opposite the 60s and 70s even the 80s but now it's fucking Reverse. I mean, everything's no. goddamn this bizarre world. Right yeah, now. and I've tried to because I am such a, just like a rebellious character. Since I was in elementary school, I was the guy getting thrown out of class and suspended. I got yeah. expelled from high school. It is so easy for me to just be like, I hate the left because I live in California. So you alluded to this earlier that if we lived in like Tennessee and shit, I would start hating those people. Oh, for I would sure. start hating the oh, right for sure. because we would see the like the extreme fringes of the right that suck equally as bad. So I'm trying to listen to more balanced sources for yeah. my news now because I have gotten to the point where I'm just like everything is like if it's right, it must be good because I hate the left so yeah, much. Yeah, I get that. Like I was I, like, I was in in Austin, which is the liberal, it's the blue stripe in Texas. Yeah. And I was at like a health food store and there was like this Indian family in front of me, like mother, father and kids like buying their food and they left and I went up there and this woman goes like, this neighborhood's changed a lot, huh? Oh my God. Which Indian. is like this, veil, and I'm looking at her like, really? Is that a thing? Are we worried about nice Indian families in yeah. your fucking stupid ass suburb of Austin, you dumb bitch? Yeah, well, they, That's crazy. They, they might poach a couple buffalo here and there, but <laughs> other than that, you need to go be a- or were they red dot Indian or uh, no. yeah yeah they're red feather. dot okay. yeah that was the think, joke I, I don't yeah. think you'll ever see I don't think you'll ever see four red dot Indians uh, alive together you know what I mean you have to like travel or you mean Native American Indians yes yeah, yeah. yeah you mean yeah, feathered yes, yes. Yeah. Native American with God like with it. like the baby sling on their back and sh- I'm like, also uh, sick of like colonialism getting a bad rap like thank God for colonialism yeah. it's it's what gave us civilization and a lot of culture people like, thousands of years ago the person I shut up it's like where are we, we gonna, up. where are we gonna get our raw materials I want gold on my watch and if fifty thousand black kids have to die for it and so be it that, that was a joke. that was the line that was the fucking line you found it that once was again the line. Uh, obviously <laughs> I'm, I don't wear gold watches um, but yeah. yeah that's that's something I was researching for a bit we have coming up I, I've got this super liberal character I'm gonna do and he's got this theory about where racism came from but 
I, in researching slavery, like a lot of the things I would see are that first of all, um, it was like the Arabs were the original decimators. Actually, the original decimators of Africa were the Egyptians who would just enslave other Africans. And Egyptians, they were also black. And usually, so were the Egyptians. Right, right. Yeah, that was the original thing. And then, yeah, the Arabs got to it way before the Europeans got to it. Mm-hmm. And every fucking European country, even the angelic, at least as the left sees them, Scandinavian countries, oh, yeah. all of them were in on it too. So yeah. if you think everything's perfect in Norway because no. healthcare. No, they <laughs> had fucking slaves. And, and Ameri- don't get me wrong, fucking slavery is fucking awful. And a lot of people in America, the things we have done in the civil rights period, a lot of shit was fucking awful for black people. Absolutely agree. Yeah. But you still have to realize that America is great and that everybody wants to be here for a reason. And we shouldn't just piss all over the Constitution and start anew yeah. because some people were assholes in this country the, a while there's ago. There's this weird theory that like every other country uh, borders were made just from like handshake agreements and like thumbs up and just right. rivers and shit. No, every country was made by war and genocide and slavery. Mm-hmm. That was what was for dinner in fucking civilization up until like 1980. I think like Africa banned slavery in 1980. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So it's 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 completely fucked that we have this idea that mm-hmm. America is just like the arbiter of everything sh- shitty people yeah. in the world. But people will never look back at the history books and learn because they yeah. don't want to. Yeah. They don't want to know the truth. What is, what is it? Like, I've been thinking about this. I was really high all weekend just snacking <laughs> on edibles and I was getting paranoid and I was like, what, and, uh, I'm s- sorry, Bill, if you have to go, we'll, we'll wrap this up soon. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I just, I can't help but thinking that th- it feels so artificial. Like, the way that companies and the way, like, the tech giants and everybody now is just, everybody's a racist, diversity above everything, BLM, there's got to be two national anthems at the football game. It's like, is this, who is doing this? Is this, like, China doing this so we're focusing on retarded shit Probably. instead of actually educating our children? I mean, do we, it does... The grade school curriculum have to be more gender than history or mathematics just so Russia and China can kick our yes. ass? Like, is this them on our social media platforms? Yes. Like, it, it just it feels like an, like bad actors from the outside. Right. Like, it feels like they're behind all of this. Yes. A lot of it is it, if you divide a group of people or the country, then they can't com- combine against a common enemy. Right. So... Like, if they can get all of us to just fight each other willy-nilly, the left and the right, then the people who are actually in charge, like Joe Biden and shit, they can just do whatever they want because they don't really give a yeah. fuck about either way. Well, also, like, you, you trick people into thinking that they're making the compassionate choice because everyone wants to feel like they're better mm-hmm. and everyone wants to feel like they're compassionate. Mm-hmm. If you say, this way, mm-hmm. uh, critical race theory, g- gender theory, all this is about being compassionate to those less fortunate and those disenfranchised. Mm-hmm. Your people, it will naturally make people feel like they got to stand up for it. Yep. And, and, and then you just go down the slippery slope. And know? then also, there's no better way to silence somebody than calling them a racist. Oh, yeah. So you can dispose of your enemies like this. Yeah. It's exactly. very yeah. powerful, this fucking race thing we got going on right also, now. Also, a lot of people, they don't even really care about politics that much. So they just see the guy who's offering free money and likes the gays and the blacks. And they're like, oh, I'll vote for that guy. Yeah. It, yeah. It, it made, it's a much simpler argument than, well... Uh, tax theory if you do da, 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 da. people yeah. don't want to listen to that yeah yeah I mean that's been around forever though the, like the Democrats you just tell people they have to work less and you'll get the vote but like right now this whole thing with like our educational systems um, it leaked at Google Ben Shapiro was talking oh, yeah. about this they had this pyramid of genocide and at the base or okay so at Google they're educating people and saying that if you are just politically neutral if you don't have opinions on various topics like BLM police brutality you're contributing to genocide Jeez. okay According to Google, that's the bottom layer of the period, just being apathetic. And then the next level up is Ben Shapiro, Republican speakers. They say that's like the next level getting closer to a Klansman. Yeah. So nowadays, you don't even have the right, if you work in a big company, to not care about politics. Yeah, yeah it, it's be- well, it's become from you vote for this group if you're compassionate or whatever, and now it's more of if you don't vote for this group, you're a racist. Like if you if someone finds out you voted for Trump, then yeah. to like about forty percent of the fucking population of the country, they immediately just think you're a piece of shit who probably hates brown people. I, I think if like L.A. liberals found out how many black Republicans there actually are oh, man, in the world, so many. their heads would explode. Mm. I meet them every fucking day. They're mm. everywhere, and they just yeah. don't talk about it. Yep. Yeah. Well, fucking Larry Elder, though it's it, it's insane the, the press coverage of him. The and, black yeah. face of white supremacy. Yeah. He's the 
the black face of white supremacy exactly. Yeah, I saw the, uh, the clip service of him getting egged by a chick in a monkey mask too. Yeah, like a hardcore liberal girl was wearing a monkey mask, throwing eggs at a black politician. And then she like punched one of his staff. They're so tolerant. Yeah, you should pull that clip yeah. up. It's fucking it's gnarly. Fucking great. It's, yeah, uh, dude, I saw that clip and I just I wanted to be there. I wanted to Did jump. Did she to have the an screen. argument for the monkey mask? It, that it wasn't was racist. It was unexplained, and so I don't know if that was actually her intention. Might have just been to be anonymous, and all she had was her gorilla mask. <laughs> that day yeah, I think but that it, might have been what it, it but was. I mean I, it, was it though it seems to be a pretty hefty coincidence you could just maybe wear not a mask. but it just seems like yeah so you, could wear, you could wear a COVID mask dumb. <laughs> yeah we're gonna pull this up right now for the audience to see and then Bill's got to get out of here and I think that's yeah. gonna be a show yeah this girl everybody's gonna want to kill her but I feel like she's she hasn't been doxxed you don't hear her come over here come over here where are these headphones I've already seen this the press pause real quick recall. Austin Let's let Bell hear this because yeah, I've, already, yeah. I've already seen it. It's just infuriating. A girl with the very bright hair over to the right. <laughs> In the oh fucking gorilla God. mask. Yeah. <laughs> Race really heats up. A protester threw an egg at she Republican missed, candidate missed the Larry consequences Elder of wearing a girl today mask. Wow. as he walked in Venice. It forced him to cut his campaign short as security quickly whisked him away. Did they not show the full clip? She yeah, like they didn't show the it. Guy in the face. Yeah, they didn't show. That's the most infuriating part. That's so annoying. Hey, check this out. Hey, how? Oh, we got, we gotta get we gotta get Google Platinum or whatever YouTube Platinum on this. Mm. What is it called? Fucking no ads. Google Premium. I there think. we go. That was close. YouTube Premium. We don't need the whole friggin' march across the bridge. I'm trying to see if it's a before or after where they oh, yeah, they're gonna be like... threw it. I don't know. This might not even show the clip. I don't even see the girl in the, perp the monkey mask. Yeah, this doesn't even show it. This is how uh, YouTube is. If you ever try to find anything, they'll... Yeah, YouTube doesn't want to let that They don't let that much. shit show, man. Let's see. This one's in like Here's Sky the, News, it's weird music. There we go. Can you hear the audio? Yeah. And then oh. they cut it. Oh man. Wait, there's more. There's more. Can you can you scrub through? Yeah, they don't even show. This girl is I mean, she assaults one of Larry Elder's security guys. Here we go. There you go. Oh. Yeah. I mean, she should be in jail. Like, yes. dude, if someone did that to like fucking Kamala Harris or some shit, we would lose their mind. <laughs> wow. It's crazy. Man. And it's, this is a person who, I don't know if she has a DUI or if she's just impoverished, but she's riding a bicycle. <laughs> she's riding a fucking bicycle. Like, I mean, this girl shouldn't be able to vote, much less throw eggs at people and wear a gorilla she mask. She cares about the environment. Oh, yeah. Oh, but she's anti-animal. Right. She has eggs. <laughs> All right. Well, guys, sorry. Um, we, uh, I don't know. We we lost Cigar Guy today, so we had to scramble to get a guest. He'll be back again soon. Yeah. But uh, thank you so much for Bill Dawes yeah. coming Bill Dawes, in. Thanks for having me, guys. Always good Murder. to see you. Same, man. Yeah. I love you, buddy. I love you. Can I say I love you? Okay. You can't yeah. say it to me. Are you me. okay with that, Dino? No, no, you can't say it to me or, or Dino. <laughs> I, I just, I, from all the shit I talk about this guy, I care about him respecting me. I'm hosting tonight, yeah. dude, at the Ha Ha. Any advice? Just have fun, man. Yeah. Just smile and have fun. That's a high-pressure gig. Don't use oh. the word fat. <laughs> That's yeah. a high-pressure gig, huh? Start it with fat. Who's the biggest I mean, comic you got on the lineup? Uh, I guess it's Trevor Wallace. Oh, okay, nice. yeah. that's bigger than I expected. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's a that's a guy who has, who has uh, things going on. Yeah, yeah. Nice man. Congrats. Yeah. All right, Bill. Have a shot before you do it. That's a good advice. Uh, that's uh, one that's shot. Good call, actually. Yeah, just one. All right, guys. All right, guys thanks. Peace. Later.